Yeah, no, I, I think you and I both do agree that uh, there needs to be an equalization of opportunity in this country. Uh, I think it's grossly uneven. And frankly, I think that's the basis, one of the bases of my worldview. So we do agree on that. Hello. What's up? What's up? How's it going? Can I just call you Goon or do you prefer another name? Oh, no, no. Goon is cool. Okay, and do you want video feed on, or are you cool with just voice? Uh, I mean, whichever you prefer, I don't mind. Um, okay, I mean, this is this isn't really anything that uh, I mean, like that I'm uh, probably gonna end up like posting or anything. So, okay, so I mean, I, uh, yeah. I am, I am. Because I know that you're, hmm? yeah. I was just going to tell you, I am live on Twitch, just so you know, and I am recording this, and I there's a possibility okay, okay. that I will upload it to YouTube. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. That's fine. Okay. Just want to make sure. Yeah, um, no, I'm, you know, I'm sure I might upload some clips or something, you know, but yeah, I'm not, yeah, it is. Okay. And also, I've been obsessed with Vampire Hunter lately, the game, so I'm going to be playing that. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun. All I, right. All right. Oh. Cool. Queen Laura introduced it to me. I forgot to say, Queen Laura, you Vampire. yesterday yesterday I downloaded it on my phone and I just have been obsessed with it. Anyway, sorry. Okay, so I'm going on Jubilee soon, as you know, and I will yeah. be debating black conservatives. And I'm Do you know who's gonna be on there. No Do you idea. You know who you like your panelists are gonna be. Okay, no okay. idea. Um okay. so I'm going to be the white liberal, uh, one of them, and I will be facing okay. up against a bunch of black conservatives. So is it going to be like a few of y'all, you know, like a few white liberals or just like you? Have you ever seen Jubilee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way that it, yeah, the way that it works is going to be like three or four on each side, probably. Sometimes okay, it's, okay. sometimes it's fewer. Sometimes they have like two on one side, probably because somebody had to bail out at the last second. But um, usually it's like three V three. So one of the okay, uh, okay. topics. Okay. So first of all, before we start, um, can you give us a brief introduction to you and your politics okay. real quick? Uh, let me see. Let me see. Give me one more second. Let me just do one more thing. Uh, doesn't have to be super like detailed. So, uh, as far as me and my politics, I would say, um, uh, you know, like a lot of people say that I, I lean uh, more, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. moderate, moderate uh, right, you know, moderate conservative. Uh, I mean, and I kind of feel that way myself. Okay. So, sen sen uh, well, right leaning. Like I definitely understand things like, uh, you know, okay. coming from both sides. Uh, but like at the same time, you know, like uh, a lot of my politics do lean um, more right, I would say. Okay. So I just wanted to clear that real quick. So we, we are working yeah. with conservative. Okay. Yes. Yeah. As long as that's yes, fair to fair. say. So um, how do you feel about the Supreme <sighs> Court decision about affirmative action? Let's start there. Okay. So yeah, um, as far as affirmative action, uh, I think it was something uh, that had good that had good intentions or whatnot mm -hmm. and i think that it did help out a lot of black people i mean clarence thomas the only reason that he's in a position that he's in right now is because of affirmative action you know uh -huh. but at the same time it's kind of uh like uh defeated its purpose and what it's uh said it's point out to be because if you actually do the numbers uh the the um the uh biggest the uh biggest i guess uh mm -hmm. i guess like uh benefactor of uh of affirmative action has been white women so um okay. you know is that just i i literally don't know like a stat. lot of people have been saying that as well so i literally don't know the stat so is that just by yeah. sheer is that by sheer numbers or is that uh taking uh a percent wise well uh, I, I would say it's uh i would say it's uh percent 
okay. wise. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just that that makes it a little um, but, bit more legitimate. But, but yeah, I mean, like, it's definitely a thing, you know? Like, it's definitely, like, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, white women, um, you know, getting, um, well, um, I guess being a part of affirmative action, I mean, because women, um, you know, being a female, that is uh, considered to be a minority, you know? So they, they are... I mean, yeah, yeah, but like, I mean, they, they, they have the same they, type uh, of status, have, yes. Yeah, yeah, but uh, they do have, like, there's certain, I guess, uh, what what would you call it, like, uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, like, uh, just benefactors that come from, you know, being a woman, you know, uh, and then, right. yeah, it just happens to be white women, but yeah. I, I do think... Um... I think I've heard that as well about uh, white women being the the main benefactor of affirmative action. Um, I think that women did need it. I think it honestly, I think affirmative action, I kind of agree with you in some ways is that is it's not exactly fulfilling its original purpose anymore. But if I were to uh, if I were to like go back and change it, what I would do is I would actually make it stronger. And I would say, uh-huh. well, let's not do this based on race. Let's do this based on something like income level. Because I think anymore, there's an issue if you were to try to uh, like figure out like, okay, let's trace your lineage back to like 1786. You know, that's just not going to work. Um, and then, of course, you have a bunch of white presenting people today who are white. And they might have a you know, a black slave who was one of their ancestors. So do they get affirmative action? Like, I don't think that's right. I think honestly, the easiest way to go about it is just based on class, like economic class income level. Um, So I do agree with you on that point. Um, But I I wouldn't say that the Supreme Court went to the correct direction with it, because basically what they're doing now is um, allowing uh, things like, uh, you know, the grandfather, or not the grandfather clause, the, um, no, it is the grandfather clause. Like they, they, they have people who are still being grandfathered into, um, into, um, colleges. Like, uh, I can't think of the name. Sorry. I'm ADHD and out right now. <laughs> um, what are they called? Ivy league schools. What do you mean? Oh, okay. Okay. okay yeah. So, okay. so they're being grandfathered in, which means it's legacy admissions, right? So like they have family members who went there or who are staff there. And so they're far more likely uh, to be admitted because they have family members there. Um, so that was a problem that affirmative action helped kind of solve. Um, and I would like to see more uh, legislation put into place to prevent that. You know what I mean? Like people who do the legis or people who do the admissions process aren't the family members of the people being admitted. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's one problem that did that affirmative action did solve that I would like to see legislation to replace it because as it stands, it's just gone, you know, and I don't like that. So that's just me. I got you. And then, um, mm-hmm. one, one, um, other thing that like, I've definitely noticed, um, mm-hmm. especially now how, uh, affirmative action has, kind of um, helped like Americans in general uh, to kind of, I guess, uh, gain access to um, education because right now we're having like a lot of these immigrant groups, uh, mainly um, Asians that are coming over here and outscoring like a, like a lot of Americans. Cause, so uh honestly like i think now like it's kind of uh kind of like gave us like a net that's kind of like protected us um because like if you didn't know like like a couple years ago um like um it was all over the news but um it was like i believe harvard or one of those i believe um colleges Mm. um like it was it was basically about to have uh, just like all Asians, um, you know, be enrolled there. And it wasn't about to be uh, any Americans, you know, if it wasn't for a front of action. And like a lot of people are saying that, uh, you know, uh, Asians um, are getting affected by it. But I mean, like it's sad, but I mean, like it's true because like a lot of them are 
highly educated and if it wasn't for affirmative um if it wasn't for affirmative action then you know like a lot of them would be outscoring us and um you know like out testing us and everything over here right now honestly so you're saying that you know, um but, affirmative action kept more asian people from getting admitted is that what you mean i think it's uh def yeah yeah yeah, like and, it's and definitely, in, place of, uh, in place of them, there would be more white people. What was that? Like because they need to fit certain demographic criteria. So like instead of a, instead of uh, bringing on a bunch of Asian people, like they would be forced to admit also Caucasians, right? Is that what you mean? Well, well, yeah, 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 yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, because like if not, you know, like if we didn't have affirmative action, I think like the way our workforce and all that looks right now would be completely different. Honestly, like I think it would be ran by like a whole bunch of Asians and like Indians and shit right now, honestly. Mm -hmm. Well, (laughs) I think um, there is, I mean, Asians aren't naturally any smarter than anybody else. Right. So uh, they, it's just like, uh, it's largely cultural. And and also I want to stress that Asia is an entire continent. You know, it'd be like saying it'd be like grouping all of Africa together, which people often do, or like all of Europe well, together. Yeah, Imagine yeah. grouping all of Europe. I mean, that's insane. You know, you can't even properly group uh, Russia that's together. That's well. said Asia because Asia, you know, like it does have to do with the culture there. You know, and just like you said, like you know, like um, one person isn't different from like another, but you know, like it's all in the environment. And, and like right. the culture that you grew up in. Right. You're, you're a product you know? of your environment. So, I, I believe that heavily. Yes. I believe yes. that heavily. So, so um, may I bring up another tangentially related topic on that note? Hello? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Um, oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, moving kind of on from <laughs> affirmative action in general, um, how do you feel about the fact that, like, uh, you know, the black population currently in the United States is, you know, demonstrably more economically needy and disenfranchised than the white population. Um, I mean, it's just like I was listening to something like a few days ago mm-hmm. and it's like, what, probably like, uh, what, probably about like 50 years back. You know, mm-hmm. um, basically like a long ass time ago. Right. You know, like black people uh, owned, you know, more property. We own like like at least like two or like three percent of like uh, of like the property in America, you know, like as a black group. OK. But now, you know, like we only we only own um, up to one percent or even less than that. So, you know, like if you're talking about like ownership, you know, black people are actually in a worse position than uh, we were like a long ass time ago. Interesting. You know, Why, but um, how do you think that came about? But I would say it's it's a part of me wants to say it's by design. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's like me, you know, putting on my little tinfoil hat or whatever. How by design? But, um, Can you expand on that a little bit? Just by like systemic. Racism and um, specifically, I guess, just trying to, I guess, uh, keep your enslaved class down, you know, like you just, mm-hmm. I don't know, like, I just feel like there's some type of spike there or some sh- shit, but, you know, but, you know, like, like if, if you actually look at it like statistically or whatever, you know, uh, through, yeah, yeah, through, uh, God damn it. Um, I'm That's sorry. That's okay. No, it's okay. Please um, take your time. This is not high stakes, I promise. Yeah, no, I just got um, people hitting me up right now. Oh. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like, God damn. I'm sorry. I forgot I was about to say. No, no, no. It's okay. You were talking about, wow. uh, you were, you were talking about, well, now I forget. <laughs> um, uh, you were talking about how, like, there's a sort of a conspiracy you were hinting at. Um, not per se a conspiracy, but it's going to sound like one you said, um, whereby this is yeah. by design that black people okay. kind of, yeah. So, 
So yeah, so basically, like uh, like the reason that I say that is because if you look at it now, you know, uh, mm-hmm. through um, you know, um, immigration and like basically like whenever slavery ended, you know, you already had that workforce that was gone, that uh, low, uh, that uh, low wage that like a lot of companies were, you know screwing over Americans and, uh, you know, um, I guess uh, getting that cheap labor or, or whatnot, mm-hmm. you know? So, uh, you know, once they got rid of slavery or whatnot, like, they basically started, they uh, replaced that group with the uh, immigrant group that they're letting in right now. I'd say and, that's uh, a very good. Uh, I agree. I agree completely. And, you know, black people were already, I guess, like getting in a, getting into a better position because we had that workforce there. We had that uh, we had like jobs and um, opportunities, you know, even though they were, you know, still taking advantage of us. We still had that workforce there. Now, since these uh, companies have like this new, um, I guess, uh, slave class or whatnot you know like they're taking advantage of these people and this is leaving black people black americans completely disenfranchised because we we don't have any jobs even though we were getting screwed over in the first place now we don't even have the opportunity to get screwed over you know right it's like you know which in turn the jobs just aren't there right yes yeah yeah so what do you think the solution to that is um, if you could, bro, just give me like five minutes. All right. Oh, you're good. No worries. I'll talk to chat. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. I'll be right back. Okay. okay. How you doing, chat? How you doing, guys? I feel like this is not that interesting. We just don't disagree on like too, too much yet, but I do have a feeling that we're going to get into like the nitty gritty here with immigration and stuff. You know what I mean? Um, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. I did watch um, on my own time, uh, and I should watch it. Maybe we'll watch it again, like on stream. But I watched uh, Jubilee's Black Conservatives versus Black Liberals, uh, which they did three years ago. And uh, I didn't really take a whole lot from it. God damn it. Let's do that. Um, I didn't really take a whole lot from it. Uh, I mean, it's the same arguments that you kind of always hear from Black Conservatives, um, which, frankly, I mean... Part of me wants to say that I'm overthinking this. I'm playing VS on my phone. Nice. Yeah, I downloaded it on my phone yesterday and I could not stop playing it. Or it was two days ago. Two days ago. Because um, I remembered you told me about it. And I'm like, I was bored at work. So I was like, huh, maybe I'll just get that game. And I did. And it was a mistake. So, um, yeah, we don't disagree on too, too much yet. Um... But I am interested to see where we go with this immigration thing. Because um, something tells me that he's going to say, like, we're letting too many people in. Which I think that comes from... I don't think that comes from a malicious place for him personally. I think it does for politicians who kind of dupe people into thinking this way. But um, I, I um, I do want to address it. I don't think he's has a whole lot of input or knowledge on these subjects. Um, frankly, I think that makes him the perfect opponent right now. I just kind of want to get a general idea of what I'm going to be up against. That's all. This game's so fucking fun, guys. It's so addicting. You just like get into a groove and you can't stop. I can set this game also so that you guys can pick the power ups, but I don't know if I want to do that because you guys will dick me over. Um, what else should I ask him about? Anybody got any good suggestions on topics? Go ahead and leave them in the chat. What are your thoughts? Leave them down in the comment section below. 
don't forget to smash that like button and hit the subscribe button to be notified when I upload more content. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, God. I'm spitting. Literally spitting. Not like metaphorically. That was terrible. <laughs> um, metaphorically, not spitting at all. <laughs> 2014 YouTube. Um... You know, it's wild, like, Amazing Atheist really was there. I I only bring him up because, like, I was just talking to him. Um, he really was there at, like, the bitter beginning, you know what I mean? Um, and is still bouncing around. I watched his video where he said that, like, he kind of had a, uh, Roe v. Wade. That's a good one. Um, there's a common talking point among black conservatives that, like, uh, abortion kills more black people than, like, anything else per year. Um, which is a disgusting line to toe because you're, you're playing on the, uh, you're really trying to play on like the liberal side of it, you know? Um, it's just, it's just gross. Cause like, I'm sorry, fetuses aren't people. Oh, another thing on that black liberals versus conservatives thing on Jubilee that I saw. Um, they talked about uh, trans people, like queer people came up because one of the guys that they had on there was a trans guy. And um, he didn't reveal that until like midway through the conversation. Uh, so, and believe me, he was like not clockable. So like this came up and he starts talking about like how... You know, he does accept queer people, obviously, because he is one. And, um, you know, they started talking about, like, religion and how, like, in the black population, so many people are religious. And so that has to be respected. And I'm like, no, that's bullshit. No, it doesn't. I can, resp I can respect culture without respecting bigotry. If bigotry is part of your culture, your culture sucks. Get a new one. That's my answer. I will say that on Jubilee, too. Like, if they try to pull that shit on me, I'll be like, well, I'm sorry, then your culture sucks. Get a new one. And if they try to say black culture sucks, I'll be like, how dare you? <clears throat> All right, I got it. What's up? Welcome What's back. Okay. So, um, I don't know if you wanted to continue your thought or if you wanted me to just ask a new question, because I got one for you. Oh, no, I'm not ready to go. Okay. What are your views on abortion? Uh... I mean, uh, it's cool, but okay. I don't think uh, the way that we are going about it and have gone about it has been the correct way. Can you delve into because, that? Uh, uh, just because, like, the whole, I guess, like, sense of... Uh, um, okay using like abortion as a kind of like a kind of like a clutch like something like to like rely on other than it actually being like an actual medical practice you know um uh, so you're saying and, people use like birth control yeah yeah and uh i've just personally seen it take more of an effect you know, towards like the black community, um, mm -hmm. or just towards like the lower income, you know, areas. Um, why do you think that is? Like, why do you think lower uh, income people tend to get more abortions? Uh, I mean, uh, I would just say like the uh, stress of things. The stress uh, of things. Yeah. The uh, I guess like. Um, like financially where they're yeah where they're in like a financial situation or um uh they're just like in a position where they're just not ready to have a child you know okay what would be uh the way that you fix that uh, you, the, the problem just to be clear the problem you pose is it, that people are using abortion yeah, right. as birth control so how would you fix that yes yes I mean, I would de definitely say uh, the reason that they're using it like that is because of the access to it and through uh, 
uh, through, I guess, uh, I would say like through um, certain things that have been like repeated in the news, you know. Right. And um, I think when once like the masses starts hearing, you know, certain things that like start to uh, play into the media, then that starts to play into uh, society and like how people start to view things. What's in the news? That's and that's making- all I was saying. What's in the news that's um, making people get more abortions? Man, and and I mean, uh, not necessarily even in the news. You know, like it's a, it's like a, uh, like a, a, it's an abundance of things. You know, mm-hmm. it's like you know you have the whole thing with like the, uh, I guess, uh, like uh, like the breakage of the family. You know, like people mm-hmm. not taking uh, uh i guess like the family unit so serious like as they mm. did in the past um that like on top of uh, you know like um uh, i guess situations in the news uh whether it be like this is for women's rights or this is uh i don't know like this is like for something else you know, but not really um, like explaining, I guess, like the, f- the full nuance, you know, uh, uh, that can play out, you know, if, uh, you know, society does just have full access to something like abortion, you know? So, which, which yeah. I mean, like we see now. Yeah. So you're saying that. The issue is that media is kind of pushing the idea that abortion's like an okay thing to use as birth control, and then that's what's making people do it, or like a, or like a lack of respect for the the family unit, maybe. I wouldn't say necessarily like the media uh, uh, is like the main thing, but they definitely play a part in like why people are just so lackluster on family and like getting pregnant and just being so like uh you know like i can do whatever the fuck i want and you know just go get a fucking abortion or just go uh you know yeah like it's like no fucking consequences you know abortion is a lot higher in the black population and then the white population why do you think that is uh uh, like uh, like is it just that black people are just (laughs) more more susceptible The, are black people naturally more, more susceptible to that media? Well, I would definitely say, uh, you know, because like th- th- this media and all this stuff that we talk about, mm-hmm. propaganda is like, is what I like to call it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, this stuff, like, is shit that, you know, motherfuckers go to school for, you know, like, I only know so much, you know. <laughs> Okay, I mean that's uh, and, fine. And, I'm and just... like, and like, can only explain so much of how you know deep and uh, in depth, you know, uh, showing, uh, I guess, certain things like on TV, having you know certain, uh, like uh, certain, having like certain uh, music, uh, music culture or whatnot, like plays into. Uh, how like a culture thinks uh so you know if, it just uh like yeah i would so, say you know like yeah. again it's like an abundance of things like it's a complicated issue you know like you couldn't just point point it to one i guess like uh you know like oh it's the media or whatnot like no i would say like it's an abundance of things you know okay i'm gonna give you my hypothesis on why the black population and poor people in general uh i don't mean that all black people are poor or anything just that they tend to have a higher you know what i mean higher population of poor people um economically disenfranchised people tend to uh have abortions at higher rates first of all it's the finances right like if you get pregnant and you can't afford the baby then there's really only one option and that's abortion so that's one thing. Yeah, but right. even before that, you know, you you ask, like, why are they having sex? Why are they getting pregnant in the first place? That's a common question. And my answer to that would be they're having sex in the first place because humans like to have sex. That's just a thing that humans like to do. 
And um, if you do not have uh, access to birth control or if you don't have the education required to not get pregnant, then you are more, far more likely to get pregnant. And so that's kind of how that happens is like a lack of information, a lack of education, a lack or of access to birth you control. Have, or you could have like a society, you know, because mm -hmm. they don't have the, well, I mean, like they have these problems, but not as on a mass scale as, you know, like we do in America, like some place like, uh, I don't know, like a Saudi Arabia or something, you know, um, things are going to be like a little bit more toned down to where uh, I guess uh, people might try to hide these things because they may feel like a shame, you know, uh, because it's not like, uh, it's not like socially, uh, it's not socially accepted there, you know, but if you're what's not socially uh, accepted. Well, just like how you were saying, like, as far as like getting pregnant and, you know, uh, um, I guess like just having like sex frivolously or whatever, you know, because that's what humans do, you know, like, yeah, okay. like here, yeah, like here in America, I mean, I mean, like that's kind of like accepted, you know, but you know, like in a place like Saudi Arabia, uh, Saudi Arabia. Arabia or something like that, yeah, they might look down at that and be like, you know, uh, people might feel the shame and all that stuff about that, you know. Well, so, yeah, but the, the, might, yeah, yeah. the culture kind of precedes the legality right so like if there's a culture of this like if there's a culture that looks down that like kind of frowns upon casual sex um you know we've seen a lot of times in these nations that that leads to legal action being taken against that i mean just in uganda i believe was it uganda or was it somebody correct me if i'm wrong but i believe it was uganda that uh they they had that anti-gay law put into place yeah yeah, um, yeah. Was he? No, Uganda's the rich place. Was he? Oh, yeah, no, no it, was Uganda. it was Uganda. We were just talking about it like, uh, okay, okay. About like a few weeks ago. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it was Uganda. So, um, like that's kind of where that leads. And I'm, I don't want to assume anything, but I would venture, I guess, that you don't agree with their death penalty law for gay people, do you? No, but I, uh, you know, like I'll say it before, I think it's, uh, something that has kind of blown out of proportion and that it has more nuance behind it. You know, it's not just, uh, I guess like, uh, Ugandans hate gays, you know, like it's not just that hairline, you know? Yeah. But they, they, why do they hate gay people? They don't hate gay people. Oh, sorry. You're saying they don't. Sorry. Because that would be what? a broad, that would be a broad statement. Of course. And no, that, no, and no. That would be my issue with the oh, whole. Oh, no, you're right. You know, I remember this conversation. With that now. whole thing. Yes. Yeah. For, for context, guys. It's me, a broad statement. Me and, me, and, <laughs> me and some other people. And um, uh, 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 why am I blanking on your name? I'm so sorry. Um, <clears throat> Goon. Goon. Sorry. Goon's fine, right? right? Okay. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, me and Goon were talking off stream one day and uh, they were getting into an argument. And I think that honestly, they were talking past each other. Um, but yeah, no, of course, you're absolutely right that it's not all Ugandans that are uh, anti-gay. You're right. And I'm not going to get into the, the I'm not going to get back into that conversation. Yeah. But, um, you know, it is the government there, right? Which, yes. you know, is yes. supported at least partly by people who live there. It has to be. Otherwise, there would be a revolt. Right. They have to at least tolerate yeah. it. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. So, you know, they've you know, there are Christian theocrats who have gone over there and not theocrats. Uh, Theo was the word. I don't remember. Um, theocr well, no, they are theocrats, theocratic fascists, I believe, who went over there and they're like, hey, you like it's bad to be gay. It's wrong to be gay. And they kind of helped shove them into a uh, anti-gay mentality such that they ended up having laws against it. And they did that because they think it's sexual deviancy. In my opinion, people should be free to have sex with whomever they want as long as they're of age and consent. Um, and that should just be that. Like, there shouldn't be any laws against it. There should be no social stigma against it. Uh, people should just be allowed to do what they want. And if you have proper access to birth control, which we should encourage then you won't get pregnant and thus won't need to have an abortion. Because what people, I think the left memes a lot about how much they love dead fetuses and how much they love abortion, yada, yada. And like, I kind of get on, on those memes too. I'm guilty. But ultimately, I don't like abortion. You know, I, my girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend had one back in college. 
you know, we accidentally got pregnant and I had to help pay for her abortion. And I still haven't told my parents just because they're Christians and I don't want them to know because they would punish me. Well, they can't now, but they would have back then for sure. So my well, dad has once told I'm, me that he would disown me. So, um, but so, I just, uh, I don't think that's a positive or a uh, uh, healthy way to go about it. So um, do you consider yourself a liberal? I would say I uh, progressive or leftist would be the most accurate. Um, I go by progressive these days just because people call me a liberal. I don't fucking care. From the left, I should say. Leftists call me a liberal. So do you think, uh, I guess, the left or the right, which, which one is more... I guess, beneficial towards the black community. Oh, 1000% the left. No questions asked. 1000 times out of 1000. And why would you say that? Because we push for policies that would objectively and demonstrably improve the plight of black people and also people of any race or origin who are economically disenfranchised. Okay. Now listen to what I'm about to ask you. All right. (laughs) All right. Name me something tangible that the left, that the Democratic Party has done specifically for black Americans. Well, I know that affirmative, affirmative action, affirmative action was instituted for that purpose. And by the, I believe it was by the Democratic Party back in the day, uh, uh, you know, the progressive leaning party. Um, I believe they cracked down on redlining back in the day as well. Um, They were the ones who passed the Civil Rights Act. Um, all kinds of stuff, really. They didn't. They haven't gone far enough, but I think they've certainly got some wins under their belt. I'd have to look into it more to get specifics. So, um, and uh, the only reason I ask that is sure. because, um, you know, like a lot of the times. Oh, what's going on, Saber? Do you mind if Saber joins? Uh, that's fine. Okay, okay. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a black American. He uh, oh, perfect. Lives in China right now. No, perfect. Okay. perfect. What you, okay, yeah. So what 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 side are we talking about right now? So all right, so just so that well, uh, Alex, yeah, Hello. you just explain, like I guess. Uh, Oh, I explained I explained why. So I was talking about how in Uganda they just passed a law to execute gay people for being gay. Um, Uh, They've made it it a crime to be gay over there. And I was talking Uh, about how that came from the cultural idea that uh, sexual promiscuity or sexual deviancy is bad and should be stopped. Whereas my point of view is sex, you know, sexual activity among consenting adults is fine and you should be allowed to do it regardless. Um, and there should be no law stopping you. Um, I also think that uh, we need better access to sex education as well as uh, preventative, uh, what, what is it, um, birth control and also STD prevention. Um, if we could get those things and then we could, you know, we could open the floodgates for sex. And as long as everybody have, has access to those things, uh, we'll see way fewer, because this all stemmed from the abortion conversation, uh, we'll see way fewer abortions. Mm-hmm. That's my argument. Okay, so I can see uh, where I would agree with a lot of what you're talking about as far as educating people at a young age. I wouldn't say about uh, like depending on the age, like for age appropriate things as far as uh, the difference between boys and girls, right? Like I think we all remember fourth or fifth grade, sixth grade or something. Like they separated the boys and girls for the class and they were talking to them. Yeah, kind the of a weird thing they did, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They used to separate us and tell us, hey, you're going to start smelling. You're going to have to start taking more showers. I hey, remember. maybe you'll start to grow facial hair and shit. Yeah. So, yeah, I can see something like once they get to, what, sophomore year of high school, maybe before that, I don't know, depending on how liberal the people are, that uh, you would ask parents to start having those conversations with their children. Uh, maybe mm. if, even if you, cause like some people don't want the school to be involved, but you can, the school can at least nudge the parents in the right direction and say, Hey, you know, as kids get older, we, we all know what it is. And so, you know, to make sure that all the kids can graduate, uh, 
you know, safely without any problems, maybe talk to your kids about like these certain subjects at home. Um, I'm going to counter that with a take that you might find pretty hot. I think that uh, schools should teach sex, teach sex education, uh, regardless of whether the parents want them to or not. Um, I think that all children have a right to certain information. I think that parents do not have always the best tools to know which information that is because after all, kids are not born with an instruction manual. But thankfully, we have professionals who did study child development and who do know the best things to teach kids and at what ages. I would trust them over some random nobody from, you know, uh, God knows where, Iowa, who lives out uh, on the farm separated from, like, everybody uh, because he's mm -hmm. convinced that, like, lizard people from the government are going to come in and, you know, uh, trans his kids or whatever. Uh, so I, would trust, I would trust professionals over that guy. So you're going. So I would say that guy is an uh, outlier in extreme case, right? I, I would say I, that not I, by much. I, it, I personally grew not, up in a conservative family, and you know, yeah. they my parents did not teach me that being gay is a thing, and to the extent that they did, they said that it's a sin. So you know, it's not that far off. Yeah, no, well, that's that's. Uh, I, I'll, I'll keep race out of it, but okay, yeah, I get it. So. Did you say you'll keep race out of it? No, 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 no. Please bring race into it. That's the point of this conversation. Let me, sorry, okay. let me bring yeah, you into yes, the fold. Let yeah, me bring it to the yeah. fold. So the reason that me and, uh, I, I keep forgetting. Goon. I'm so sorry. Um, Goon. Goon. I'm so sorry, Goon. That's completely my ADHD. I promise I don't hate you, buddy. Um, so uh, the reason that me and Goon are talking to begin with is because I, um, I am going on a Jubilee episode where it's white liberals versus black conservatives. So by all means, okay. please bring race into it. Okay. Well, I would, I would argue this, right. Uh, mm -hmm. for like a long time in the, the black community, maybe we weren't like the most like, like jumping up and down about like, uh, you know, the homosexuality and stuff. I agree. But at the same time we didn't, it's a, it's a, like a myth that's been thrust upon us that like we despised and hated these people. It's like, it was more like a live and let live thing. Cause it's like at the end of yeah. the day, you're a black man or a woman before like what you're doing in your bedroom. And so it's only until later that a uh, different narrative has been uh, thrust upon us. Right. Cause I like my grandmother's in seven years, it's like years old and she used to, she knew all, she, they knew like, you know, who's, who's what and who's who. Right. Cause it's a, they used to have small, uh, close knit communities, so you know who's going in and out of people's houses or hanging out together. Of course, so it's like all right, you do what you got to do over there. I mean, I'm personally not interested, but okay, you have. Fun. Well, I will tell you that as far as violence goes, the demographic, the specific demographic that is the most at risk of violence is black trans women, and the reason that is is because, uh, frankly, in the black community, there are statistics and studies that show. Um, there is a higher prevalence of homophobia and transphobia that goes on there, frankly. And it's because they're so economically disenfranchised and usually not, you know, as a block as a whole, they just don't have as uh, good access to education about those topics. And so they, they, you know, they learn from their parents, maybe uh, from their religious practices, whatever, that it's a, a bad thing and a wrong thing to be this way. And so they target those people. And that's why we see the trends that we do, especially with black queer people, uh, specifically black, gay, and trans I would, people. I would, I would give you a counterpoint of sure. uh, when you're when you're at when you're pretty much uh, dealing with a lot of outside <laughs> bullshit and everything. As far as like, uh, and then you brought up abortion too. Uh, you have uh, abortion, a lot of outside pressure, and everything. You have uh, poverty disenfranchisement and everything else right mm, yeah, so yeah. inside the group uh people who some people who might feel like these people are like taking away from uh the amount of people who can be born for the next generation of people because we're already such a small number in the country so why would you want to celebrate something uh that doesn't help increase your numbers to fight against whatever you're the, to right. fight against the enemy or whatever. Right. I would so, say that might have been something that a lot of people were thinking. And as far okay. as the education, what well, you're talking about the education. Just yeah, to clarify, just to lot. clarify, is that an argument that you're making or is that something that you said people thought and that's why they felt the way they did? I've heard that from, uh, you know, some of the old heads in the community. Okay, but that's not your perspective. My perspective? Uh, uh, 
I'm I'm too I'm not uh I'm not TOS friendly. Don't ask me that. Okay, I mean what's what's not TOS friendly about it? Uh Goon knows what I'm talking about. It's not TOS friendly. Okay, well I mean if you say so. Yeah. Uh because that's a whole nother like rabbit hole, right? Because then I'd have to start talking about like uh like buck breaking and other stuff and I'd rather not go down that rabbit hole. Talking about what? Buck breaking and stuff. Butt like breaking? That. Buck breaking. Buck breaking. Buck breaking? Yeah. Yes. Hold on. I feel like I've heard of this. Is that... I'm sorry. You don't have to explain it if you don't want, but I'm... You know what? I'll it's, just look it up real quick. Yeah, it's pretty disturbing, to be honest. Uh, Is that a movie? It's some shit. As a new threat to black masculinity rises, Tar- Tariq K. Flex Nasheed joins forces in this document. Okay, so you're saying that, like, the LGBT... Like it, it, like the movement as a whole is attacking black masculinity and trying to emasculate black people. Is that kind of the idea? That's what some people believe because of uh, what they used to do to the slaves. Is they okay. would uh, yeah. rape and emasculate them in front of the other uh, men and women. Is that something? The, uh, Making them like dress up in the minstrel shows and all this other fucking weird ass yeah, shit that they, they used to they do. Would, uh, and they would uh, like annually rape them with uh, props and uh, actual actual packages and stuff. right and that's horrible because that was against their will yeah and it's also because well it also, you gotta it see it's like something that like that happens over a time you know like it's not like it was like a one one off no like, no no this was not one this was not like a slave like owner a joe yeah 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 no, I so no, I completely understand that. And that's rooted, that's rooted by the way, both in this is where intersectionality comes into play. Because so, that's rooted both in um racism. We want to make mean? black people suffer. So uh, give me just a second. Um and I'll explain it. Um so that's rooted both in racism because the the racist part is we want black people to suffer. And there's also uh homophobia in there, and also a bit of misogyny, which is how can we make this black person suffer? Ah, I I got it. We can humiliate them by shoving things into their butts, right? So, like that's kind of in front of the other people, other yes. in front of the other slaves, right? Yes, the, the so cruelty then, so, was the point. Yeah. So then you know, just the like, like, have you heard of that instance with Terry Crews? You know that big swole dude. Uh, what there's instance? an instance. There's an instance where like. He was at a party or something like that, and then like some old white dude just came up to him and like just grabbed him by the balls. Well, that's not good. I actually had it, yeah, it's, it's like, tangentially it related. Like, I had a uh, it just like just. I was actually I had a similar yeah. thing happen. It wasn't the balls, but I had a gay guy come up to me at a bar once because it was like a gay thing going on, and I was there with my girlfriend, and my girlfriend and I were making out. And this dude, I guess he's like drinking or whatever. Not an excuse, by the way. But he just comes up to me and he decides that like, it's his turn and he starts making out with me. Like he, like his lips touch mine, and what I'm like, dude, what the fuck? So like, yeah. I get him off of me and I play it off like nothing happened because right. I don't want to start nothing. But, um, but like, but you guys think about it's not said. just the gay stuff. Like you know, like it's the D, it's the uh, I'm trying to the uh, basket, um, masculinity. Yeah, like just trying to, I guess, like uh, demasculate somebody, you know? Right. And back then, yeah. right. And back then, that's the way they did that is because because the idea was the homophobia part of this is it is not masculine to be gay. Right. It's not. And when people say gay, well, what they no, mean is get things shoved up your butt. I don't even consider that gay because you're not that's not even a gay act. You're like it's, you have to. OK, hold on. Right. You have to admit that's you have right. it. No, that's it is. It is. No, right. I'm not taking that away. I'm saying yeah. it is. This is where you have to kind of look at this in a complex Wait, man, way. Now, are we allowed to say the R word on Twitch? I think <laughs> yeah. so. Guys, okay. I, I mean, I've said it. I've not gotten in trouble, so All it's right. fine. Right. OK. Um, but anyway, um, I, what, what my point is, is obviously that was, you know, the, the, the big root in that is the racism, of course. And the fact that they sexually assaulted somebody, you know, that was non-consensual sexual acts. But the reason that they did it specifically the way that they did it is because like they wouldn't jerk him off, right? They would shove, they would put things in the other direction because they were like, this is humiliating. This is emasculating, Right. And that, my friends, is both homophobia and uh, uh, misogyny. 
Well, I would tell you uh, another reason why is because you have these uh, these slaves for the most part. A lot of them bigger, stronger, you know, than these guys if they didn't have the guns, right? So what you do is uh, by doing this, right? These guys before they came from Africa, a lot of them, you know, they have family units, their husbands, or like they were leaders, chieftains, whatever, right? So you humiliate them in front of their people, and then that it, it's like what is it? What's the saying? You go into the prison yard, right? And you beat up the biggest, baddest looking guy in there, and then no one wants to fuck with you, right? So it's... by doing by doing that and you cut off you cut off the head, right, of the chicken, right? If you think about society at that time, the men are supposed to be like at the top protecting, providing, and everything else, right? So you you basically tell all the women and children that, hey, uh your your men are nothing less more than bitches. So <laughs> Don't think right. about uh, putting your head, you know, higher than it is supposed to be, and just right. stay there like docile uh, property that you that we think you are. And so right. then that is by doing that, right? That also fucked up the family, right? Because you no longer have that central, just one father or whatever else. It becomes more like the women and the elders of part of the community raising the kids, right? And if you see that today, everyone wants to talk about, oh, well, you need to have some kind of you know, family unit that's that's strong and prosperous. But well, I think I think by doing that, that destroyed that. I mean, it was know, different family. for every, you know, for every situation. But I think in general, the family situation in slavery period was just not very good because no matter what happened, like the slave owner was the slave owner and he was the guy in charge. So like the, you know, black people, including the fathers, were always subservient to them. Um, so like, I don't I don't know how much you can bring family dynamic into it. But, you know, I, I guess I understand your take, but I think that the more important takeaway is that, you know, it was, it was just this fucked up thing to do because it was sexual assault. But if we were to analyze it more closely than that, you know, why did they do things the way they did them? It's to emasculate the guy. And the yeah. only reason we consider that emasculating is because of the ideas we have about women and gay people. Well, no, it's because it's literally like, you're literally breaking, you like know, gay, you know, like you one. have like alphas in society. And How, if you what's an alpha? were to take a, a uh, like the leaders you, of the group. Well, I, yeah. Okay, like so a, a leader. Okay. It, it is. Yeah. Like a woman could be so like alpha, Joe Biden, you know, you could, is Joe Biden no. alpha? No, let's let's be real. Oh wait, he's the leader. I'm just kidding. But like, I understand your point. Um, yeah. I I don't know. But like, just having like that mentality and and just breaking that mentality, you know, that's yeah, the whole course. thing behind it. Like like you know, you can like remove all of the gay shit. You know, like that's just like a headline. You know, like the the main thing behind book breaking. Is like trying to break somebody's mentality, you right? Know, I think we can break their spirit, right? I think we can agree it was a screwed up thing to do. Um, well, we'll have, if you look at it, the effects are nowadays still there, right? Because you get a lot of uh people who have this uh idea that, like, hey, you can't rely on the, the black man in his community, he'll always you know chuck or jive or do this other stuff, right? You can't. He can't He'll always on, wait. Is like, is the idea that the black man will be gay or like like have butt sex? <laughs> no, it, it's the, the the idea is that you can't trust him to be uh, a leader of his of his group or his community. So you need daddy government or you need other people to come in and tell him what to do. Well, if anything, I'd say the conservatives are pushing the idea that black men can't be leaders. They always push this narrative that fathers are leaving the home. And frankly, that's just a lie. Like in, in well, black yeah, communities, that where they're getting those statistics is uh, marriage rates. And black uh, men and women tend not to get married as often because the way that we had, uh, the way that we have, um, uh, what is it called? Is it... Um, is that it's affirmative action? Of, the the no, 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 no not affirmative black action. Black. The um the welfare checks, the welfare system. The way that we have that set up is such that if you get married, it only counts as one income, uh, not two. So it is more fiscally uh beneficial to not get married for people who are on welfare. Well, I would argue also it's also because there's not so much opportunity in uh 
a lot of investment in these communities, right? I would agree. So if you if you look at like divorce rates, right? Mm-hmm. Divorce rates decrease as the amount of money in the people's pocket increases, right? So the highest divorce rates are and the most violent and the most you know, what you guys would call homophobia and transphobia and everything else, right? Is always is mostly at the very bottom of the echelon, right? That's the people who are poor, who are uh who are poor, uneducated because of one reason or another. And a lot of them, you know, they have a proclivity towards, you know, uh, violence or other things, right? Because that's the only thing that they're left with because they weren't able to learn other ways to express themselves or get ahead, right? So that's mm-hmm. that's what they know. Right. Works. Right. They lash out at other people of other demographics, right? Yeah. Right. Um. Okay. I mean, I, I agree that, uh, I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. God damn it. Um, can you repeat the last part of what you just said? I'm sorry. So I'm saying because the people like, it's the same thing with, uh, you know, what that, what people say, like, uh, uh, violent crime against women or other things, right? It's at the, at, it's mostly what well, divorce, violent crime, uh, against women, violent crime against each other. Uh, what you guys would call these uh, homophobia, transphobia, and stuff. Okay, like so that, yeah, right? that, so yeah, that's more prevalent it's among people. That's more, who most are poor, prevalent. Uh, and right, people who are under the underclass, right? Right, right, right. So that's that's always most that prevalent. One more time. Yeah, because I don't have that much free time to fucking care what you're doing in your bedroom. I'm too. I mean, like personally, I'm educated, right? So I, I'm, oh. I'm working. I'm doing other shit, right? So right. I, I understand that, like. Okay, yeah, sure, there might be a time and place where I might have to get into fisticuffs or fight with somebody. But right. most of the time, it's better to just talk to somebody or de-escalate and walk away, right? But if, right. as you see often, what happens is it's like one person starts shouting, and then another person says, do something. And then the other person said, the other person has, uh, they call it, some people say it's post-traumatic uh, slave slave syndrome where they, ha- their li- they feel like their lives are worthless, right? So they're okay with just like, for that simple fact of like trying to feel like they are human or they are there in the moment or something, they okay. are willing to risk death because if they, even if they die in that situation, at least they died standing on some kind of bullshit or whatever principle or idea that's like, is no matter how small it is, because that's all they have. Right. Mm, I don't know if I would attribute that specific. I mean, that that's it's, complicated. I would, say it's, I would say it's mostly due to education. Yes. And, uh, also being poor because when you're poor and you're in those situations right you you live you live through violence and crime every day trust me i'm from that right. i'm from that place no i yeah i agree i grew up in it so i know what other people were doing where like friday you know you say hey what's up man see you on monday and then monday morning you find out that he was killed because he was trying to steal drugs from somebody and he he got the right one well that sucks but why was that guy trying to steal drugs? Because he was poor and he didn't have any other opportunities in his mind. Right. And he so how he didn't want to he didn't have he didn't want to focus on education because of peer pressure. He thought, well, if I if I'm sitting here reading books and everything, that's a waste of time. I need money now. I'm trying to survive. I can't think about the long game. I got to think about the immediate and putting money uh, putting food in my stomach now. Right. So how could we have prevented that? Well, I personally think you need to put, uh, you need to invest in these communities with uh, education, agree. banking. Uh, you need to put actual, you actually need to put hospitals and shit in these areas instead of, and uh, instead of putting them like way out where these people can't get to them, right? Give them proper health care. Uh, and if you I do agree. those kind of things, right, with proper health care, maybe they'll start thinking about, Less STDs and everything else because the health clinic's right there, right? So they can go get the condoms for free from the Department of Public Health. They can go get tested. At the Department I agree of Public completely, one hundred percent. And then, and then if you think about like banking and other things, right? If you have banks there that are willing to uh, help invest in the community and businesses for people who actually are trying to do something, then that helps, right? Because we all know that it's better when there's local businesses or even some, you know, some other bigger businesses in a neighborhood than there when there's not, when you're in the neighborhood and like the only stores that you have in there are like corner stores and churches. And that's all you have besides houses. 
You don't have any banks. You don't really have any hospitals, barely a fire department, barely a police department around or whatever. Those places are suffering, man. They're suffering because you have to go all the way on the on the train and commute, go here, blah, 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 make money, come back, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, you know, it's a miserable existence, right? No, I, I believe it. I didn't grow up like that, but I do believe it. Um, my question to you would be, why are we relying on banks to invest or like, like wealthy investors? Why not make this like a government program? Like police, no, no. because police buildings are run by the government, right? So they should be the ones funding it. Yes. No. So what I'm saying is okay. by investment, right? Is that like, say you can have, uh, you don't even need uh, a bank, right? You can have like a community bank or a credit union, right? That's okay. like inside the community that's run by the people or, you know, inside the community, not some big, you know, Wells Fargo or something else like that, right? It's the kind of smaller community bank in that area, right? Okay, so, then, so, okay, so publicly run. Yeah, pu it can be publicly run uh, co-ops. So well, that's exactly, I mean, that's yeah. exactly what that would be, right? It's a publicly run bank. Yeah, co-ops, publicly run banks. Because what happened is, it's like there used to be like these uh, banks that were owned by black people in black neighborhoods, right? Mm -hmm. And the banks would uh, okay, help but, you but just real quick, a house. So, but just yeah, real quick, yeah. because that wouldn't be a publicly run bank, right? That would be a privately run bank run by a black person, presumably from the neighborhood and not with bad intentions. But, you know, it is still a private corporation with a black person at the head. Well, of it. You can't you can't you can't just. Yeah, but sure. But you can't just have all of the investment come from the government. Well, that, when you that, but when you say public that, bank, that's what that means, is that it's in, it's paid for by the government taxpayer money. Yeah, there can be. Yeah, you can have credit unions, public credit unions, right? Okay. But you can also have uh, private banks. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So because more... you have to have a mix, you have to have a mixture of public and private partnerships, right? Yeah, we can, we can get into that, but I think that I think that any government assist, any organization of the economy that relies on the charity of businesses is a doomed one, um, because you, you can't legislate charity. You know, you have to kind of count on them to do that. And I just don't think that that's a good idea. No, um, I wouldn't say it's charity. I would say, like, this is essentially what happened is, is that these communities weren't always, like, poor uh, and, and uh, degraded, right? Right. So what happened is, is that for a long time, there they did have banks in those neighborhoods or near those neighborhoods. And like you said, you can't uh, continue to think about charity and stuff. So what you get is redlining and other stuff right. where people say, ah, we don't want to do that anymore. I say, okay, fine. So instead I'm talking about like the government. Sure. The government comes in and they, they should clean up the bullshit that they started in the first place, but they, you, you can't completely rely on the government for everything because eventually you need to have like people who are self-sufficient and doing things privately. Right. That's why I said it has to be both happening start you can start with the government and then eventually uh this you know small local businesses of the people who are from that community and everything mom and pop shops or whatever also have to start being there too right you have to have both or you can have the government you know uh give incentives and everything to these people these uh corporations or even the local populace to like start to learn trades or do other things right that will also help out the community itself. So then you wouldn't have to get private businesses involved. Um, I mean, I agree that we need to educate some of these people so that they can, you know, start uh, being productive and working out, you know, working on their own. I, um, I think that the, here's my take on it. Here's my take on the whole thing. So okay. me and, uh, I'm doing it again. Hold on. Oh, I'm not, I'm not asking your name again. Goon, Goon. Damn it. I, Goon. I don't know why I keep forgetting. It's not that hard. Me and Goon were yeah. talking about um, how you're a product of your environment, right? Of the environment sure. that you kind of grew up in. So sure. where I would, where that to me, what that tells me is it begins with making sure that people have a an environment in which they can thrive. You know, you can't structure it the other way around where it's like you just expect people to build that environment without any outside help, because that's not how society runs, um, especially when that society has been pretty much uh, surgically struck, structured against you for centuries. So like, 
I think that, uh, you know, government programs like welfare, an expansion of welfare, I would say, and I would even say if you want to see, um, you know, if you want to see families stay together better, uh, what you should do is make welfare better, where it's like, and, you know, welfare should. And Alec, mm-hmm. Alec, this is where I was questioning me you in the beginning when I was asking you about um, like like what have Democrats and the left you know done for black people you know specifically black Americans and I honestly feel like uh, the Democratic Party and the left has definitely hindered um, the black community by you know Giving us access to all of these government programs. Sorry, that's that's a very not, silly. You know? like, that's a very think... silly idea. I just don't think okay, that's true. Okay. Um, okay. The, the, because right, right. you know the reasoning being is when you give somebody money, they they have money now, you know, and so why is that bad? I just don't understand how that would hurt somebody. I would feel like you shouldn't just give money just to give money. You okay, should. but we're not children here. We're adults. You know, obviously you don't with your own child want to just, you know, hand them $100 bills on the fly because you'll spoil them. You'll make them expect the $100 bill whenever, you know, just whatever. And, and whenever. I would tell you some people in the black community. And that's, and that's exactly what the black community is, you know. But, but black, the black community it, isn't children, though. The Democratic right? it. No, but uh, just just uh, just, like uh, just listen to that concept that you just said, but just apply it to how the Democratic Party has been treating the Black community as like their children, you know, by giving them all of these, uh, you know, programs, acting like they can't do anything on their damn own, you know, acting like we're just such like a. Uh, disenfranchised you know it's like damn i mean like yeah you know like shit was fucked up but i mean you 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 gotta like teach somebody a skill you know rather than just try to uh i guess like a just a system like the whole time you know um just like the whole i was also along, feel like, you know? we can have, i would also yeah. tell you sure. i would also say this alex uh when people act like, for instance, you notice like a lot of times we complain about like uh, each, a lot of rich people being spoiled or uh, doing a bunch of bullshit, right? All right. the time. And the reason, one of the main reasons why is, and I I can say this as an educator, is that okay. when you give someone somebody, when you give somebody something that they don't think they work to get, they just hand it to them or they don't think they deserve, then it, it has like an opposite effect, right? So like if you if we for instance like uh changed changed uh you know welfare instead of like just instant money in your pocket or whatever right and we instead made it like you know uh free classes and certification programs that you can get into or whatever as well right mm-hmm. or you know something similar it, or if like if you did something like that, I feel like that would change, right? Because then the people would feel like, oh, yeah, I'm not just getting this check for free. I'm also learning a skill. Hey, girl, uh, you know, I can uh, type a 100 words a minute now. I can become a secretary or whatever. I don't have, I can make more money than what this welfare check is giving me. I don't have to sit there and, like, not get too much money or too little money and be worried about, like, being left out in the lurch, right? Because that's what a lot of the fear is. And then it also makes it so it will start to be frowned upon, I would say personally, to engage in certain behaviors, right? Because the more educated and more learned a community is, right? The more that what you, what people, a lot of people would consider lowbrow as far as violence and, you know, what I guess you get, you would say these phobias and everything, those would be lessened by quite a bit. I agree. Because people would have a sense of uh, self-worth and fulfillment, right? Especially uh, we talk about, uh, young men or boys, right? It, you always hear about, well, black men ain't shit, black men ain't this, blah, 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 in our community, right? So if black men actually was learning how to, you know, I don't know, become a welder or, you know, learning out, or they was learning some shit and then they became a kinesiologist, even just becoming a gym teacher, right? Becoming a gym teacher or something is a big step up 
than being like uh work you know working on the being on the corner getting welfare and like selling drugs for gym shoe money Sure, right. but how how exactly does somebody go about learning how to be a welder in that community? Like, if you don't have the That's money for I'm, trade school, well, if you don't have the qualifications, maybe yeah, you don't I'm even saying, know that the opportunity's there. Maybe it's too far away. Maybe you know, like, there's or you don't have a car. I'm, there's all kinds of things. Yeah, that's why I was saying earlier you would have the government invest into those kind of things. Right, which would be welfare. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Not, but yeah, okay. not just giving money. You know what I mean? Just but giving money is, is but you are just giving money because you're you're telling them we are going to give you money so that you can sustain yourselves, and then you're also saying we're going to basically give you free education as well. So not only are you advocating for welfare, you're also advocating for free college and trade school. Um, right? Yeah, we we used to have the we have the job corps, you know. Huh? We do have job corps, right? That's essentially what that is. You you go to school. And we feed you, right? Mm-hmm. While you, but you have to learn a trade, and you have to be on your P's and Q's. And like, then once you graduate, hey, you're good to go. You can become a mechanic. You can become this. You can become that. You can become something better. If you didn't graduate from high school, you can still do something with your life, right? Think about it. Like, that's so much better than just giving the guy, you know, three hundred bucks a month, and then he goes out and. A lot of them are trading it or they are buying like unhealthy food and then they're becoming overweight and obese. And then like that's also compounding other problems and everything else. Right. Instead of. Well, I think that I think that the obesity problem, the obesity problem in the black community is I don't think that's related to actually giving them money. I think that's a issue of food deserts and lack of education as far as what's healthy. I mean, I've taught drug addicts in, in group sessions and you'd mm-hmm. be surprised the amount of information they don't know about dieting. Um, it really is something. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, simple calories in, calories out. Well, I mean, there's more to it, but uh, on yeah. to stay on topic, like there's, you know, um, if there's if there's more obesity in the black community, that speaks to a health problem that is affecting them more for some reason than the average American. Because obesity is a huge problem for all of America, but it's especially prevalent in the black community. And because they're poor and they can't afford the foods that they're supposed to be eating, right? But well, yeah, if you invest, I mean, if you yes, invest so and you that is give part them, of it. That uh, is part of good it. Good jobs and everything else, and you also educate them on. Well, and they know, have no I'm time to early. exercise or engage in the activity, like the physical activities that they might want to otherwise, if they had time. Yeah, yeah because all these jobs are not in their neighborhoods. They have to travel all the way over there to somewhere else to get, and then they come back, and then they eat dinner, and they're tired. And right, then, and then guess where their income tax goes? It doesn't go to their community. It goes to the one that they move, that they drive to. Guess where the yeah. uh, you know guess where the money goes to the police officers that are often in black populated areas? It doesn't go to your community. It goes to the community that the police officers live in. So you see this gradual drain of money and resources from these black communities, and then you want you know you're like hitting yourself in the head a decade, two decades, three decades down the line. And you're like, how did this happen? Oh my goodness! Well, you drained all the money out of it. Yeah, that's why I said I would invest and put those things back into those communities. That's what I would suggest as well. And, you know, I think that uh, providing for basic needs first and foremost is going to do wonders all on its own. I personally have a very upbeat and positive view of humanity. And I think that if their basic needs are provided for, that they'll surprise you quite frequently. I mean, the guy who invented or not invented isolated, discovered and isolated insulin, sold the patent for a dollar. You know, he wasn't, um, you know, he, he wasn't like uh, given, he, he wasn't forced to work for that. He wasn't forced to do that. He, he didn't do it for a financial incentive. He just did it because. So I yeah, just, I don't know. Sure. There's a lot of people who will. What I'm saying is that we can't, sometimes you can't, Some what is, what's the best way to say it? Sometimes you have to uh, force people to help themselves, right? Because mm-hmm. you have to force people to help themselves, right? Because, like, that's why we have interventions. That's why you have drug counselors and you have all these other things, right? You can, because if you just let the guy just sit there and no one goes out and calls out to him or gives tries to put some structure or something in their life, then they'll be forever lost, right? Not necessarily. I mean, you do need things like outside of yourself, obviously, but people have goals. People have ambitions. I don't ever, I, I've never met somebody who's just like, yeah, I don't really want to do shit. I don't want to do anything with my life. 
Well, like there's a, that, I mean, really? I'm sure people are out there, but I've never met them, and they certainly don't exist in that large of quantities. You know, everybody wants to do something. Everybody wants to make a difference uh, or, or follow a passion. And I just feel like if you provide for basic needs, that people will more often than not surprise you and make, you know, if not something like insulin, at least like really good music maybe. Or, you know, who knows? Maybe they'll make the next video game masterpiece. Like, you know, there's all kinds of things you can do with your life if you're not – strapped to a, a a job that you work 60 hours a week making paycheck to paycheck money yeah i i would i would agree with that but i'm just saying money uh, you know just just throwing money at the problem isn't the solution that's what that's all we've been doing is throwing well, money no at and the that's why i said i think we yeah. agree on the money and education bit but once the education ceases i still argue that the the money should still be there for them because now they actually know how to use it productively this is an investment in people we're talking about for how long forever uh, i think that everybody's basic needs should be accommodated for we live in a po post uh uh, post-scarcity society. There's no reason we should live in the richest country on earth and have people uh, sleeping homeless outside of empty apartment buildings. It's quite ridiculous, actually. I mean, so like once they're educated, they have a good job, they get off their feet. Don't you think they should uh, pay it forward and move on? Well, if you don't need government subsidies, obviously you shouldn't get them before other people do. My argument is simply that if somebody does not have something that they need, like food or water, or houses, we give it to them first, and then we worry about their education and their direction, and how they'll give back. But that, you know, but the the, the precursor is always of accommodating their basic needs. I don't think that should be earned. They did that. Bef they did that previously with the government housing projects, right? And I feel like at the end of the day, those cause more trouble than uh, solutions. Well, the government housing projects were pretty half-baked, if I recall. I don't know a whole lot about them, and I should look into them before my appearance on Jubilee. But, you know... Uh, you should do it, because it's going, to be a, it's going to be a talking point you want to hear. Because what happened is that they there was a lot of single-family homes or, like, uh, small apartment buildings and stuff like that, right? That people were living into. And the government fucking basically ate, you know, chewed up the land and said, here, take this and get the fuck out the way. And then they... Uh, bought the land, build up these huge uh, things, right? And they, because they thought they were going to keep getting money from the federal government uh, for upkeep and other things. And they say, well, we can keep this as a uh, low income housing and everything will be great. Eventually what happens is the federal government, you know, said, uh, we're not paying for that. And so then uh, they, ent they ended up in disrepair and other things. And then the other thing with the low income housing is that uh, if you made a certain amount of money or you were a family or something else, you weren't allowed to uh, be there, right? They would come and check up until like the, I want to say the 70s or 80s. They would just come and check and say, hey, you know, how many people are in here? Blah, blah, blah. How much money you're making? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and then so what you get is, is that the kids are unattended and then they start making Lord of the Flies in the neighborhood, right? And we already know how Lord of the Flies ended up. With gang, you know, how, wait, how did we get to Lord of the Flies? So... The government says um, you okay. So the government says you can't live here because you're making okay. So wait, they they start making more money and then the government says the government gives them the boot. No. So what happened is is that you have the government housing, right? I'm okay. giving you the, the what happened with the government housing. The government housing happens. They buy up all of the single family and like smaller family uh, homes, right? And then they put up these huge uh, high rises. And at first everything was okay, but then they start putting stipulations like okay. If you uh, you can't have a man in here, really, uh, you can't make be, be making too much money. Yeah, so uh, so that with, so that we should have public housing yeah. without means testing, then. So means, yeah, basically it means test everything, and so what happens is, is that the parent, one of the parents, is always working. The parents are always working at the house. So what you have is is all of these kids, like a whole generation of kids, where it's basically Lord of the Flies. They're downstairs playing with each other from the time they get out of school until the street light comes on. And they're just, they create their own rules and everything else. And kids, you know how kids are. They, they, they're not really good with, a lot of them not really good with their words. They only can feel with their emotions and everything. Parents aren't really there. So they raising themselves. And what they do is they start looking up to each other. How do you start looking up to each other with violence, right? Right. So, they, so, should, they, so they should so accommodate the parents with not just housing, but a like a certain government funded income so that they, they can raise their kids appropriately. What I'm saying is, is that you have that, and then you have the 
uh, projects falling into disrepair, and then you have Do a you lot think... of uh, lack. You have the lack of investment and everything else, and it's, it creates like a whole cocktail. Like, it's do you think just adding more and more government programs like fixes things? Eventually, I, it depends on the programs. I mean, you can't just say like, if I learn more things, I will be smart smarter in one area like you have to you have to direct it appropriately you, i can't sit here thinking i'm going to be a mathematician studying english you know so i think that if you direct it appropriately then yes uh pro government programs can be huge do you guys mind, do you guys yeah, mind if i take just a minute uh to go to the bathroom oh yeah oh yeah man, you're good. okay thank you i'll be right back Don't, hold that thought sorry you know, he's one of the few liberals that I can actually listen to and like, ah. uh, and I'll go like, you know, this guy's fucking stupid. That's funny, bro. I think, I think he understands. He hasn't a triggered level. yet. Yeah, yeah, he understands the basic level, but I just feel like it's like anything, right? I can sit there and feel uh, empathy, you know, for when a woman's going through birth or something, right? Uh, I can feel like, yeah, I can, I, yeah, it looks painful. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go through it, but you know, I would never know or ex want to experience that shit. So it's kind of, it'll always be like a, a, a small, like thin line there that you that just can't be crossed or understood when it comes to that. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, I just wanted to get into how he really feels about how like the Democratic Party has done. Anything for the black community, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I'm sure, you know, if it's a conservative, like a black conservative on there, he's going to be asking on that shit. Yo, know, yeah, the fam these fucking conservatives, man, spouting yeah. fucking 1965, very Atwater bullshit talking points and shit like that. I was watching um, Andrew. Uh, um, I said Andrew, Officer Tatum. Um, oh God, man! His uh, I was watching like his little speech at uh, it was at uh, Turning Point. It was at, can like, you imagine? Little... Can you imagine like you just change his face to a white man, and you'd yeah. be like, oh, "What? The, what the hell is this guy talking about?" That, and that's how I feel. It's like for me, it's like if your talking points feel. And sound exactly like some bullshit <laughs> that I heard from like some guy who I know doesn't like me. Then I'm gonna be like, uh, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah. Like I, that's you can't trust those uh, those uh, those. Nah, I, I don't want to get you in trouble. I don't, can't trust those guys. But no, uh, that's pretty cool that he's going on Jubilee, though. Okay. Have you seen that before? Jubilee? Man, those be like yeah. the most cringe takes I'd be hearing ever. Nah. They be cut. They be cut like snippets and shit. Obesity, yo, I just looked at this. Obesity is not the fault of people's choices. Yeah, it is. Right? Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm back. Continue. No, I, I just saw this guy say that obesity isn't uh, the fault of people's choices. I'm like, at some point, man, you, you gotta you gotta at least reach out for help or something. Um, I think that a it is a combination of individual choices and social circumstances, like environmental circumstances. So you can make individual choices day by day that lead to being obese, but you don't just wake up one day. Most people don't wake up one day and say, I'm going to be fat. I'm going to get No, fat. you don't. Right? So yeah. I, I think there's an argument to be had there. But um, we yeah, were talking about, can. we can talk about this. But, but at the same time, 
You know, see, and this is the problem that I have. You know, you know, like especially when it comes to the black community, because you know we we we've had all these issues, you know, all these setbacks uh, that have been going on in history, and to let us not fully recover, like to just keep on putting a bandaid on shit. You know, versus like letting uh, people make like their own decisions and like fuck up. Like if they fuck up, then, you know, it's like to keep on uh, hindering, you know, like a community, I feel like is more detrimental than kind of uh, just letting people make their own choices. You know, I just I don't think it's a hindrance to give people money. I really don't. I don't think that hinders them. Well, well, so. So, just like the point that I had brought up earlier, uh, yeah, um, um, earlier about like how there were more, uh, you know, even though black people were dealing with like their issues back then, there were more uh, property ownership um, when it came. Well. I mean, if you really want to break that, if you want to break that, now. if you want to break that down, you know? and to be fair, this isn't something that I've studied in depth. But from what I understand yeah. about our economy and the way that things shaped out back then for Black people and Black business owners, is um, two things happened. One, uh, big corporations came in, they gobbled up the smaller ones, said, "Hey, we'll give you a buck fifty for this company." They said, "Okay, sure," and the Black business owners of those companies made out. Big time. Now, they didn't sell out. They did the, the financially right thing. They sold their company at a pretty good price uh, to a or their building to a bigger uh, company. And those bigger companies used that property for something else. Um, the other thing and the more nefarious thing that happened specific, which is more specific to black, the black community uh, that I recall is I know that uh, I want to say Times Square was once a community for black people. But they came in and they said, no, y'all got to get out. This is uh, not your property anymore. And we are building a highway or something. I don't know if they, well, not Times Square, yeah, but was, they, they build high, they literally build highways on black yeah. neighborhoods. So like, that's a huge yeah. problem. So, you yeah. know, they just keep getting screwed over. Left it. Like, what are you going to do when the government says we're building a highway over your house and there is nothing you can do about it? Okay. You know? So, so this actually happened to my family. Really? This actually happened to my family in um Alabama. You know, first they basically they had basically um they had basically uh, offered us a check mm -hmm. and then you know um we were like no we don't want to take anything because you know property is worth more than money or whatever. Okay. And then so like a couple months passed, uh they basically wrote us a check and then we were still like, you know, like no, like y'all can't just like like, you know, like, what are y'all doing? So and they then, extradited like, they just, you against your will? They, yes. Oh, yeah. Extradited? I don't know what the word is. But, yeah, that's that sucks. That's awful. And I'm sorry that happened to you. That's that's literal <laughs> that's abuse. I like, like, just took and, uh, and, and uh, just said that we're going to build this. We're going to build this highway. So. Yeah, that's literal uh, systemic abuse. That's, that's disgusting. And I'm sorry. Um, but I'm the way right. that you the way that you fix that, you know, it's it's not taking money away from people. It's giving it to them it's giving them better circumstances but, you know i, I feel do like you, do you understand what i'm saying when it comes to like because you're not letting like the like you're not building a, a culture of uh being self-sustaining and you know uh being uh like a go-getter and you know uh you know pulling yourself up by your bootstraps or whatever people like to call it, you know, like you're not building up that culture. You're building up a culture of, you know, let me depend on the government for a handout. Let me, uh, you know, ask for like assistance or whatnot. And it's like, no, like you can't be that type of person. What about a culture of giving to you those who like need? Okay. When, oh, okay. That's all cool and fine and dandy whenever you get in that position, you know, whenever you're successful. You know, then I mean that. Then you know that's the time and place for the well, for no, that. No. But who because to be all like sympathetic and be like, oh, you know, like I'm about to give you all that I got when I just, I you ain't got shit to give, but, you know. But I don't when, like you. 
I don't, I don't, fucked up position. I don't like know? the framing though that you're using because I don't see it that way. I see this as giving to people who do not have. You know, if you don't have a roof over your head, we give you one. It's that simple. It's it's a basic necessity. You can't just be given out free roofs for free. Sure, you you can. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah. There's a bunch of free space in this country. Do you know how many properties that these landlords are just sitting on collecting dust while people sleep outside of them in tents? Like, it's disgusting. There's no way that the richest nation on earth should be anything close to what equivocates what we have now. Well, my question is, if that's mm. the case, right, then why are we importing more people? Well, there. I know that there's a... Uh, well, first of all, uh, immigration is a net positive to society shown by pretty much all studies. Um, but second of all, it's more people means more business, you know, more people means more, work. it means more, you know, it means more, right. everything. it okay. means a better right. economy, you know, and, and okay. Florida, frankly, right. recently, Florida, Ron DeSantis in Florida said all the, illegal, all the illegal immigrants got to get out. He tightened restrictions on that. And what are they seeing right now? They're seeing what do you think losses. Huh? What do you think about that? What do I think about what? What what's going on in Florida? I think it's bad because what they saw, what, what they see, are losses. You think, you think you so, you wait, wait, is good though? Huh? Wait, wait a minute, Saber. Wait, wait, Alec, Alec. Sure. So yeah, yeah. you're telling me that you're okay with these big corporations, like taking advantage of people who aren't even citizens, who aren't even like protected by like the rights that we're fighting no. for. You know, like I to not get screwed that. over for like these big, but I mean that's what you're saying. Well, that's is a that very, no, that's a very uncharitable interpretation of what I said. What oh, I'm what? saying is, these immigrants who are here illegally are doing all of the work that provides us uh, the goods that we enjoy at cheap prices. Okay, I'm not saying that's a good but thing. I'm saying that's these, the, hold on. Let me finish. Uh, the way that's the way that the economy works. We basically built our economy off the backs of slaves and continue to do so. Now, am I saying that's a good thing? That's no. But the, hold we need on, a hold on. Hold on. I'm not done yet, man. I'm not done. Hold on. The bat the worst thing you can do is take everything away from those people. Take away their homes, take away their livelihood. Because that is their livelihood, whether you like it or not. That's how they sustain themselves. So I'm not saying that that should be the way it is. I'm saying don't make it worse by kicking them out. It. You're, you're okay, okay with that, people being okay. exploited. You're not listening. And, being, and, and you're, then you're, they're okay. coming over here because because we're providing them, you know, access to come over here. So, of course, they're going to, like, basically, uh, like, exploit themselves because they're going to be in a better position than they're in in their own country. Yeah, so what's the solution? Send them back to their own country and make their circumstances stop worse? Exploitation. Stop I'm not, no, I'm not saying we should exploit them. I'm saying do the opposite. Make their lives better by saying you can't exploit them anymore and give them amnesty. Make them citizens. Then they'll then they're forced to get minimum wage and they're forced to get the benefits. People? What about the people all the, the people who are on their way over here? Exactly. What about like the black Americans who are already been looking for jobs and shit? Now you got this influx of immigrants. You, why are you fighting? Why are you why why do you think the black community as a whole wants to fight an entire different racial group? Is that what you want? No. Okay, literally, well this, this literally, is not a zero sum game. You, we can all have jobs. Literally, all of those jobs no, like, doing, like, I got more people. Let me, okay. Like it as numbers. Hold on. You, I know, can't, just, you can't both talk at once. Okay, okay. Look, look, bro. Just, um, just literally, like, just take a city like Houston, you know, and I uh, just think about, like, a population, you, you know, say, like, like, uh, like the black community is, uh, so and so population and like the white community is so and so population and you know yada 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 and then over the years you have this influx of immigrants uh being like uh i guess this one group um which we could say is like hispanics or whatever you know sure. coming in to the the workforce and um and not necessarily holding like i guess like the values of you know trying to um you know um keep like these um high end paying jobs you know because they're willing to work for whatever or or just like the fact that like i'm just gonna stick on right now is that you know they're basically you know just like 
Um, I mean, like they're basically like just taking over with like the numbers, you know. Do you and think then, that they are? I mean, like, can I ask you something? And and that's like. <laughs> I'm just trying to get you to like uh, to understand that basically it's like black people are being replaced in the job market because of the influx of of uh, of immigrants, and okay. do not see like an issue with that. Okay, okay. Here's the thing: if you, your claim is that illegal immigrants come over because they will work for lower pay, which gets which kicks black people out of these positions, right? That's your position? It's okay. Yes. Why then don't we just pay them more? Who? We mandate it. We say you cannot pay them poverty who wages. More? Huh? Pay who more? The, the immigrants. How does the whole thing out of the job? So confused. Hold on, you, you, so hold confused. on. you guys got to level with me. Are we all on board with helping these people or not? Or do you just want them out? I want out. No, I want them out. And then I want a more secure immigration system to okay. where they can actually become citizens so they can understand and that they, don't they take the jobs. Wait, 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 wait. So okay. they don't have to exploit themselves and they know and they know that they can get paid a fair wage. You just repeated you know? my and argument back to me. That's what I just said. And get, but you're talking about like like keeping them there like in that position no, and, and I, basically like giving them uh i guess like the rights that americans who have already been here this whole time you know been fighting for and like been waiting on these jobs and stuff and and now you're over here saying that oh you know since these people were getting exploited by these jobs now Let's just pay them more. Now, hold on. That's interesting because I thought we were uh, striving for a uh, go-getter economy, right? Or a go-getter uh, culture. So would yes. it not be go-getter then to cross the whole ass Rio Grande and then take a low-paying job that pays less than living wage possible a, here you're, you're, you're uh, just criminal. so that you can have a better life? At the risk, by the way, of being deported or even killed on your way over. Like, is that not go-getter? I think it is. No, because a lot of these uh, people are also uh, being sent over here as, uh, like as small children, right? And I feel like we all know what's going on when you have small ch unaccompanied children crossing the border. Okay, who's like, sending uh, them? Conference. Who's sending them? Who do you think sending them? I don't know. You tell me. I literally it don't. Could be, it could... I personally don't want to make conjecture on that, but I'm just sitting there saying. Well, wait, that. you were just very confidently saying, "Who do you think is sending them?" I want to know. I would say that it's probably some type of criminal element. I, I mean, I'm sure that's possible for a few cases, but I think largely, if you have, wait, hold on, let me make, let me see if I can sort this out. I want to connect the dots. Why would criminals just send kids over here? Okay, so you send the kid over here, right? And then okay. once they get through the border then there are people who can sponsor them, right? And the, a lot of times the people who are sponsoring them are also in on the take. And these kids end up as uh, like uh, child slaves and other things. Okay, so... It's a, it's a big industry where this is happening. And it's not just from the southern border. It's, pe it's, kid, it's, being, it's people being flown in from other countries that you actually have to get on a plane, right? These criminal guys are bringing over uh, women and children and stuff over here uh do, basically human trafficking i don't think that's a big hold on they're sent uh, over here they're sent over here and then they get sponsored by somebody here yes sometimes they get sponsored them? sometimes it's another criminal sometimes it's a pedophile sometimes it's somebody else okay so how do we fix that by getting rid of the incentive to send them over here in the first place by changing the system I agree with changing the system, but I think that we should be incentivizing people to come over here because the way that you disincentivize people is to convince them that this is a terrible place to live. And I don't think that's a good thing to do. No, 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 no. I would say I would say not all immigration is created. Ali, how how about we just like, well, I mean, since this is already fucked up, but okay. my thing is we should have, you know, just helped and, you know, just fought for the American uh, 
rights that the that the Americans were fighting for, you know, at first before the these companies started, you know, letting these immigrants come over here so they uh, could like exploit them. You know, but uh, you know like labor unions? Like that's what you're like the fighting that you're referring to? Like, yeah. Well no, 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 no. Not even that necessarily. But I mean okay. like there's other I mean like there's other uh options, not just like the labor unions or whatnot, you know, like there's other things that like we could have been fighting for. The, the you know? point being that um, we should be we should what, be working to improve conditions yeah. here for our own workers. Is that right? Yes. And okay. then we should have, you know, been like, okay, now that we got it, you know, fixed at home, now we can let these uh, immigrants in. And then it wouldn't have been that, uh, like, oh, like you're basically using this, uh, this uh, cheap labor class, you know, uh, as a way to underarm or uh, like, try to get around like the Americans that are already here because they know that we're going to be fighting for, you know, uh, you know, like everything that, you know, um, that like we've been, we've been fighting for like since day one. Can we you not know? do both but, like, at the same time? Yeah, but you're not understanding that like this immigrant class is going to be more lax. They're not going to be as uh historically immigrants have been the hardest working individuals in the entire country hard working is different versus like standing up for your rights and standing up for like what like your uh you know like what like your uh laws and your policy um do you think that going on and like do you think that your community you know do you think that immigrants who come here under a uh, under a more easy legal structure would not fight for their own rights? Eventually, like first class, uh, you know, what do they call them? I guess like the first, first generation. generations, like the first round, you know, that comes over here. Like, no, like those people are willing to do whatever they can to feed their family. <laughs> That's what they're over here for. So what I'm now, telling like, you, what I'm telling next you. One, now, like the next generation, like their kids, like, yeah, like, of course, they're going to be Americans and they're going to fight for rights, you know, like whenever they get older. Are they not, wait, not gonna, are they uh, not Americans not for just, to, uh, they're Americans what? just by virtue of being here, are they not? Wait, 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 wait. No, no, I just, no, you can't. No, why not? Why not? Wait, what? How does that work? They, they, they you live here. China, you can't go to they Don't say that if you can go to China and fucking go over there and, and like just say that you're fucking Chinese. Like sure. no. Yeah, why not? You okay. can't do that. Okay. Right? Okay, well, wait, wait, why shit. can't you wait? Why try can't I do that? Why okay, wait, hold on. I want to move to China tomorrow. I'm saying, you know what? Screw this country. I'm taking my ass to China. I move there, I live there for ten years, I work, I have a house, I met friends, I speak still Chinese, I live still Chinese, I eat with chopsticks, the whole shebang. Why am still I not Chinese? You said you said ten years. Bro, too. You also said ten years. You're still a fool. I was thinking. I was just thinking about like the first. Well, I wasn't generation. born there, but if if I've lived there for however long, well, no, wait, hold on. I'm first generation Chinese. If I move there, that's how that like immigrant Chinese. That's how that works. So like the the, no, the generation like doesn't depend same. on how many years you've been there. Yes, it does. But no, well, wait, no, I it would doesn't. Just, wait. Hold on. My dad just, uh, came here. Hold on. Yo, I, we need to clarify something real quick. My dad's okay. dad came here from Germany. He was first generation American. My dad is second generation because the generation preceded my dad's dad. I'm third generation German American. Does that make I sense? I just misspoke there. I just misspoke there. You, you can, oh, I what I'm saying okay. Okay. Is, I'm just making. Okay. Yeah. It's fine. I'm just making sure we're on the same page. What I'm saying is this, right? Mm -hmm. There's pretty much no other country just sits there and lets people just come in without any type of skills or things that the country or the uh or the whatever like why are you basing like, what america should do off of what other countries do because what i'm saying is is that you have more, the, you're going to have fewer problems right if you sit there and you focus on making sure that your people are straight before you start putting out everything else in right it's like fucking baking a cake man you have to make sure you have all the other shit in there before you start adding 
water and this, that, and the other, whatever. You know, Why? You can't just go, I want to go this and then this and then this. Should we this, shut down all this. immigration everywhere? No one's talking about shutting down. Yes, you are. You're literally saying we got to get our own shit straight before we let people in. So shut no, down immigration talk- from everywhere. I'm talking. I'm talking about when it comes to unskilled, low level. Oh, so just specific uh, people. Okay. Low. When it comes to unskilled labor, right? We have enough problems with. What's unskilled, low level right? labor? Is it farming? Because that's what you most of teach- them are doing when they come here. You can teach. You can get you. So you can, you're complaining about people who don't have jobs, right? Well, you can teach them how to farm or something, right? Instead of the illegal... And That's what the they do when they come here. They are almost all farmers. And I'm saying you have people without jobs or other things to do, right? You can give those those jobs to Americans who are already here, and you can save a lot more money. We need more way. farmers. We can, we can do both. We're in dire need for farmers. Okay, fine. Farming <laughs> is... That's one thing. All right, I'll, I'll concede farming. If I, mm-hmm. I'll concede farming. Also, I'll, I don't think what, it matters what, what, what their skills are. I think we're the greatest country on earth. We're the wealthiest country on earth, and we have the capacity to take in whoever wants to come over. Why not make it attractive? Why not accept people in if they want to be American? I thought we were all patriots here. Like, are we not? Like, do we not want people to be proud of the country they live in? And what prouder way to be an American than to claw your way over here from across the Rio Grande? So, what you want to. Let me get this straight. So you want all of these people to keep coming over here, right? Yeah. And then what? What the government overall? Where do they dump them? They dump them in communities. See, that's that, what I'm saying. Hold on. No, you're no, talking no, about no, you're talking about human these beings, man. These are humans. What do you mean dump them? Humans are mm-hmm. are workers. They're producers. They're cre- they're innovators, but creators. They're putting, they're, I they're believe in my fellow man. I'm sorry are, that you don't, but I do. They're putting, they're putting them, them in, in places where people are already disenfranchised, like, bro. It's like they're already yeah. trying to get on their feet, and then you got other people coming in there, too. Like, God damn. Well, we can like, put God them. Damn, we have bro. plenty of space. We have plenty of resources. It's just a but matter that, of allocating them and true. doing it right. But they, but they don't do it right. They put them in community. You're right. So Especially I'm saying... Black communities that are already fucked. That, like, we already know they're fucked. And that's a problem. We should try to make it so that we accommodate everybody. We can do that. So then, we have the capacity. So then what happens is, so what happens is, then sure. they come over to these neighborhoods, right? And these mm-hmm. neighborhoods become uh, gentrified, and then the people who wait are gentrified else- by who? You don't. What do you mean gentrified by who? You said that il- wait, <laughs> illegal immigrants come over and gentrify <laughs> black neighborhoods. No, not just. A, I'm talking about something else, right? So oh, okay, you put. Okay. You put you have those illegal immigrants coming over and they put those people in the neighborhood, right? And then you already have from the other side other immigrants coming in and uh, starting up businesses and other things in the black community, right? So like you said, all this money is being siphoned off already, right? In the first place. We don't own any of from the taxes. gas stations or from taxes. No, we don't even own we don't okay, you know this. We don't own okay. we don't own any of the bis, big most of the businesses in our own communities. They're owned by people from the Middle East or Asia or somewhere or some white guy or something else, right? They're not really owned by people in our community, right? So like you said, it's taxes and stuff, right? But how can you build wealth and be able to stand on your own two feet if while you're every every time you go buy something, the money's being siphoned out? Whenever your income taxes or something happens, it's being siphoned out. And then they put people in your neighborhood who you don't know, who don't know you. A lot of times, maybe, you know, they don't. you guys don't really know each other, don't really vibe or whatever. And so then what happens is, is that immediately it's going to become a thing where the one group is going to be looking at the other group and say, hey, man, we understand you're working hard and you came for a better life, but hey. We're already struggling, so we, we, we can't really afford it. They need to put you guys, you know, somewhere else. You think it'll devolve into race war? Yes. I think I have more faith in my no, fellow man than it, that, it's, it's and especially all, it's, my fellow it's American. Happened several times already. It's happened several times already. Where, Bro, where? I would tell you this, Alex. I would tell you this, Alex, you know, because I grew up in Houston, you know, like a very multicultural place. And you would think that that's a very good thing that, oh, everybody, you know, can grab from everybody's culture. Everybody's getting along or whatever, right? Like, no, bro. Fucking black folks and Mexican kids are fighting all of the fucking time, bro. We're always going at it. I believe a better future relationship is possible between these two contentious groups. 
I believe there's a controversy. I mean, but you got to realize. It's, it's if anybody like, can do it, God damn it, America can do it. You just got to realize, bro, like, two different, like, cultures. And then putting on, to, then putting, like, these two poor groups, you know, and these uh, confined communities where, like, the job uh, markets are scarce. And then, and then, like, you got drugs and all of this shit, gang violence involved. Wait, you know, you got all this other shit like involved that's just like a clash of like cultures, bro. And okay. I mean, like, it's not just a like you, just a good thing, you know. Do you acknowledge that within America, black people and white people, or at least their communities, largely have different cultures? What do you mean? Like, there, well, there's white culture in America, right? There's white culture and there's black culture, right? What do you think black culture is? Well, it would yeah. be the it would be the collective amount of art and uh, other creations that have accumulated since you know subjecting black people on the whole to slavery when we took them away from Africa all those years ago. So, like, uh, j uh, black people uh, largely came up with jazz music and performed that until it was co opted by white people. Uh, rap music is really big. In fact, it's more popular. Where I I think with certain white. Uh, 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 populations than even with uh, black populations, rap music. Um, but like all of these cultural things that comprise, that are, that are derived from the black community at large, culture. that would be black culture. And also uh, certain norms that happen. So like the talk, for instance, quote unquote, that a lot of black people uh, do with their children about the police. Um, you know, just... They, the cultural divide is a result of all of these years of oppression that black people have faced. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm asking you, I guess, do you, do you acknowledge the difference between that, that there is a black culture and a white culture sort of, I would say there are, yeah, I would say there are, yeah, overall. So then my question is, so you're culture. saying that the cultures clash. Why can I not make that argument about black people and white people and say that America should exclusively be for white people? Because there's just too much tension between black communities and white communities. Well, white communities and black communities overall are sep are like basically segregated in, in the first place. Should they not be integrated? No comment. No co oh. Okay. That's fine. No comment. Okay. Because even if you have a uh, I would say it depends on the, it depends on the area, the history of the area, and what kind of integration are you talking about? Like, I'm, talking talking about I'm talking about breaking down the barriers that divide black communities from white communities. So that would be things like income level, uh, you know, redlined areas that have historically been segregated. Uh, you know, things like that. I can't I think of I don't more think, off my I don't head. Think that, I don't think that black people necessarily should be forced to leave the no, I'm not saying force them. I'm just saying open the floodgates. Like, you know, there are a bunch of black people who would absolutely leave, you know, quote unquote, the hood, right? If they could, um, you or, know. Or uh, you could, I would say a better idea is to invest in those areas and create like something that you can, that you, that's, that, that you, you understand and you can know, right? So for instance, if I'm in a, if when I like I went to it was only for a while, but I went to like a black a Catholic school that was mostly black people, right? Okay. So when I was there for that one year, I learned more about uh outside of what I learned from my family members and people in the community, I learned more about uh important black people in uh throughout the history of America, right? And when it came to inventions, when it came to uh uh when it came to inventions, when it came to being military guys, et cetera, uh, the arts, all this uh, p politics, okay. everything, right? So, the, but then when I was at this school that was full of mostly, I would say in most of my classes, I was the, pretty much the only black kid in my class and most of the classrooms that I was in for a lot of times, right? Okay. I, d I never heard, I never heard about these people. I never... They never taught you about these people, right? So then, you it, you would be mistaken, like uh, you would be mistaken to think that, well, if you're in that classroom, that well, black people really haven't done much of anything 
throughout the history of the country because right. if they had, it would be important enough to be put in the book, right? Right. But that's not that's not it's not in the book. So I would say that there should be like sure you can learn there should be some crossover at the bottom where you can uh like if you're a black kid or an asian kid right you should learn about your own history while also learning about you know the greater his american history in general because once you do that that creates like a sense of like hey we we they people went through way worse shit than me and they got shit done so i can also do it right it's like role models right what do we talk about all the time they say this stuff all the time especially uh, a lot of liberal people right Hey, we need to put more girls into STEM because if they put them into STEM and you see the CEO and, and the vice president is a woman and the president's a woman, then young girls will grow up and say, hey, I can do it too, right? And I would say true. black people also black people also need that, right? So if you start putting black people in schools, for the most part, that is uh, mostly white people, I, would, I, I fear they will have the same experiences as I did where... They w I went from a pretty decent, you know, private Catholic school to a public school that was mostly, you know, rich white kids for the most part, in like a more rural area, and then I saw the stark difference of what most of the people look like in the classroom and in, in the authority figures around the town and the city, and uh, in the textbook as well. And right, I feel like is, that's that, that could be a problem. Right, and this is also. why diversity and teaching. Ever, like having a basic curriculum for public schools whereby all the kids learn about the same historical figures, the same, you know, the same important points and have a, uh, you know, a mixture of, you know, black history, Asian history, uh, whatever else history, like have a good mix of it. Cause I don't think that people should be uh, learning different things based upon their race. I just don't think that's a good precedent to set. So, you know, we need to have a standardized curriculum so that, you, that will address that problem. Just implement, just implement all that into history. Like, why are we having like these certain characters that we always repeat in fucking history class that mean? are just like, well, I mean, like the way that we teach history now, you know, like it is what you would consider like white history or whatever, you know? Uh, like yeah, it's not I mean, necessarily like uh inclusive like how it should be you know like it's not teaching actual history oh i you agree know? Like, it, it almost teaches yeah. like a, a white supremacist version of it if you want my opinion yeah it starts yeah, yeah. you know it builds all it builds this up of, of like oh well we started with the greeks right oh wow the, the fantastic greeks and the spartan war the 300 men yeah vikings yeah. oh there were vikings yeah. and they were big and burly and cool and they they pillaged villages and and then uh, we get all the way to like Europe where they talk about the Black Plague and don't get into how yes. Europeans were disgusting yeah. uh, sewer monkeys uh, that infected themselves because they weren't clean. Uh, but they don't say it like that. They just say, oh, well, who knows how this could have happened? Um, my point being, like, while it, you know, while like a lot of African and Asian countries, they were taking baths. Huh? But like I said, while in a lot of African and Asian countries, people were taking baths. Yeah, I still. Yes. Yes, I agree. But the white supremacists and the structure that they've kind of, I don't want to say built, but largely uh, overseen in our education system made sure to leave that part out. So I, I agree. Kind of, that, which is kind of funny because if you, they like to talk about the Romans all the time and those guys love baths. Well, right. Yeah, they even had like... Uh, like that's where the concept of a bath came from, or at least the word, right? Not the concept. We've been bathing since humanity began. But yeah. anyway, I'm digressing. Um, yeah. I was going to make another point, but I forget. So I guess, you know, I agree with you in as far as like we need to teach a – I think we agree on this point, frankly, right? Like we need to teach an integrated and standardized version of history. Yeah, but I, I would – I feel like a lot of people – in the black community wouldn't trust a lot of, uh, depending on who's in charge, they wouldn't trust them. Well, and that's that. hard to control for, but there needs to, we need to start somewhere. We need to build trust back again. You know? Yeah. It, it, see, that's the problem, right? So mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people are, 
just uh, jaded, right? Because they, you, you start doing stuff and then they burn your shit down, and then you start doing stuff and they burn your shit down, and then you start doing stuff and they take stuff away, and then you start to get something, and then you think it's going to be for the betterment of you and your group, but then uh, other groups start using the shit that it was supposed to be for your group, and then. Uh, you basically gets co-opted repeatedly. And so it's like, for some people, it's like, mm, can you really trust what's what these people are trying to sell you, right? Well, this is, now, this is why I think that just a baseline, like if you make under this amount of money, we will subsidize you with this kind of thing instead of welfare, you know, as it stands now, uh, would be better. Like, I just think that we should provide poor people with the things they don't have. And that would learn, that would fix a lot of racial issues, to be honest with you, along with other issues. Okay, I, I can I can see that point. I just like I just don't like the, you know, it feels like a, a sick game was being played, if, if essentially right, because you hear about uh, welfare and affirmative action and and uh, all these. I can see how that taking their jobs and everything else, right? And then you right. come to look at the stats back when they were. They had they were keeping the stats right, and every year they're keeping the stats. Shockingly enough, it wasn't you know black people or even Hispanics or Asians who were benefiting the most from these programs. Yet we were yet the you know uh, mostly black people and Native Americans were like the poster child of like oh he got the job because of this because I was so much better than him. And then now you have like you know uh, Asian guys coming in there sitting there uh, I don't know being uh, pawns for white supremacist clowns and blaming us for stuff. And we're like, bro, there are people who were uh, who were white and black who had higher scores than you, and they didn't get in. You don't see them bitching. They went somewhere else. Maybe you didn't get in because your personality's ass. How about that? Mm. Yeah, you know I mean? just think I, my bottom line is we have to learn how to invest in people as an asset. You know what I mean? Like, we have to understand that when you – put time and effort and money into a human being, they will usually return that in dividends just by being a productive citizen. Like if somebody has their basic needs met, nobody like, I'm sure some people do, but most people don't just lay around all day, you know, like, and to the extent that they do, a lot of it's because they're injured or they have some kind of mental disorder that could have been dealt with. Like we're, we're shooting ourselves in the foot by not doing this. You know what I mean? So uh, for the racial element of that, you know, it, it is a truth that more black people on average by far are uh, economically disenfranchised than white people are. You know, the, the wealth divide is enormous, like huge, nothing like it should be. So uh, if we were to help just the if we were just to just help poor people, it would uh, that would, I think, account for reparations because it is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It is, uh, disproportionately affecting black, the black community, if that makes sense. So you're talking about getting their meat, uh, meets met, uh, educating children properly at the, at a young age with, uh, so they're physically, mentally and, uh, physically and mentally strong as well as, uh, literate, you know? Yes. You know, pen and string strong at the pen and the sword, essentially. And then you want to do that as well as, I guess, what? Investing in these communities to make sure that the income tax and money isn't just being siphoned out? Well, yeah. Ideally, you would want the police officers to all be hired from that community. Uh, and that would accomplish two things. That would make sure that the money they make in your tax dollars is being spent in that community. Um, and then it also would make sure that, you know, they have ties to the community, so they're less likely to commit acts of violence. Um, things like, uh, you know, investing in their education, because as much as we talk about, like, how much funding schools get, and it is a lot of money, they usually spend that on useless shit. So, you know, just a, a little more oversight on that and a little bit more attention paid to where each, you know, how much money each school is getting and who needs it more. Um, and also just making sure people have a house, have food have the basic essentials they need to thrive because again it's an investment in people and they're not going to produce for you unless you 
give something to them first. You got to put fuel in the tank to get the combustion. You know what I mean? That's pretty interesting because over here, a lot of companies, they uh, give you a salary and then mm -hmm. they give you a, a either give you an apartment or something. Where's over here? I'm sorry. Where's over here? In Asia. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Over, yeah, you either, uh, they either have like, if you work in a, like a private school or something, they, the school has dorms or apartments for the, the, the teachers or uh, if you're working, uh, you know, as in, in the police department or something, they have places for you, for you to stay, so you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, find moving around and having to find a house and renting this shit and renting all that, and so then you can just focus on working and, uh, you know, saving money and things like that. Yeah, that's awesome. I feel like, I feel like that's a better thing to do. Um, I think that just giving, like, what, what are you going to do if somebody refuses to work? Just, like, let them starve? What do you mean? Someone absolutely refuses to work, even yeah. if you hire, you give them uh, some job, like, where they could just be sharpening pencils for fucking $10 an hour? Say that we do my system, right? We say, okay, we're going to give everybody food, water, shelter, everything they need. And then some guy's like, cool, thanks. And he goes home and jerks off and plays video games all day. Um, I would take it away. You would take it away from him. So then, you know, where would where would that lead? I would give it to someone else who who's actually right. But for that guy specifically, it. I'm asking. Where so you, where you does take that all lead you him? take all of his benefits away, and then where does that lead? Like, what happens to that guy? I, at that point, if you're not willing to help yourself, I don't care. So they die. <laughs> Because that, I mean, that's that's such a facetious <laughs> thing to do, right? That no, sounds not at so all. outrageous. What about what that about so outrageous, man? No, not at you, all. What about um, you're giving him money? He doesn't have to, you're giving him money. You're giving him all these things, and then you're asking him, hey, like, hey, just go outside and like walk for five minutes a day and not jerk off all day, and you can continue to get this money. And he says, no, fuck you. Okay, and what if that guy and never leaves the house and just jerks off? With, no. What if the, what if that guy was quadriplegic, nonverbal with a trach? like a tracheostomy and a ventilator. So, like, he can't move at all. He can't breathe on his own. He just kind of sits there and watches some show all day. Can Should he, he move his money? hands? Can he move his hands? He can't move anything. Not a thing. Can't move. Can't move. Can't even do a Stephen Hawking. No, nothing. This is so funny. He can move his eyes, yeah. but... That's okay, it. well, there are machines that uh, we have machines and robots. No, no, no. I'm asking you, should we? Should, I'm asking you, does that person deserve our help? <laughs> if, if it's that extreme, yes. But you're talking, why? Wait, you're talking why? Why? That, wait, hold on. That person is not giving anything back. Why? Because if you're dead able bodied, if you're able bodied and you refuse to do it, oh, even though you can do it, that's, that's completely different. Okay, so able bodied. So, like, if he can move his fingers. You're being facetious, right? No, now. I'm not. No, the, <laughs> no, I'm asking you where the line is. If he can move his fingers, what work should we have him do? He's his fingers are able-bodied. We can put him to work. If he, if he can move his fingers and shit, then he can be typing up. <laughs> All right. Yeah, put him be, to work. He can, doing, he can be doing clerical work or something. Yep. He, he you know, he he can, uh, you know, he can take breaks to uh, take his medicine through the tracheostomy when he needs to, and. uh he you just know. needs his eyes and his hands. To Put his work. ass to work. Say it. Get your ass in the office. By the way, this is a real situation. Uh, the client that I current take care of, currently take care of in home care is a quadriplegic uh, who is dependent on a tracheostomy and a ventilator. So that's why I asked the question because I know that this thing exists. When you start dictating whether or when you start means testing these things and figuring and parsing hairs over who's able bodied and who's not. Then we get horrific things like you just mentioned, where somebody can literally only move their fingers. So what do we have them do is type, right? Um, you know, just for eight hours a day, 40 hours a week so that they can make enough money to survive with their medicine. That is and I just don't that like that. I just, I just don't think that's the world that I want to live in. No. When, uh, the first thing you said was is that, you know, he, he can work, but he, he just refuses to work. And I was like, well, that dog's That was the first thing I said. And then we brought it to the other extreme where it's you literally can't work or even survive working. Well, so that's I'm, completely so, different. No, I, it is different. You're right. And so what I'm telling you is there's an in-between somewhere in your version of this that we need to means test. 
I'm saying don't means test it. Fuck that. That's wasted time, wasted effort. Just give people the bare necessities that they need as an investment in humans and watch them go. Because I promise you they will surprise you. We could have had Einstein times 10 from a little girl somewhere in a bumfuck Africa, who knows, that died of dysentery at 10. We don't know because they just didn't grow up. They could be right here in the United States living in a black neighborhood whose dad is working 60 hours a week, uh, both parents probably. Like, Why do we just all the know. immigrants have to so, move to the black neighborhoods? It's not the immigrants' fault. We need to give people their basic necessities. <laughs> we can put them. We can give them their basic necessities and uh, palm springs. In palm springs. Why? Why do immigrants always gotta go to black neighborhoods? Why, bro? Probably because they're the cheapest. Because they're typically the the. I mean, they're typically the worst neighborhoods to go. That's just how it is. <laughs> How can the neighborhood uh, even improve if that continues to happen? That's why. What'd you say? How can the neighborhood even improve if, if that's all they're doing is going like, mm, it's cheap here, let's continue to keep it cheap by continuing to import cheap labor? Wait. The, the reason it's cheap is not because the people who live there make less. I mean, it's partly because they make less money, if that's your point. Like, they don't make enough money so they can't like buy things in their own economy. Um, so pay them more. That would be my solution is pay them more. Then they'll have more money to spend. Yeah. The money will still be leaving the community. No, won't they live there? Uh, th th those people who own those businesses don't live in those communities right now. Okay. So the money would be leaving the community. Okay. So we need to offset that with a government implementation of return because a lot of tax money is being siphoned out of that community and that needs to be accounted for and countered, which would be a government program. Oh, you in a government program. Oh my God. Well, I just don't know how else you would solve oh this. Oh my God. When does it end? You know, like, I'm not sitting there telling you that your ideas are bad or like... If Hold on one second. Or, hey, Blizzard 81 saying that humans should not die is not an appeal to emotion. That's a basic fucking tenant of my logic. I'm sorry if that doesn't register in your debate, Lord Reddit fucking brain, you idiot. Christ. Go on. I'm, I, I don't know. I just don't think it's feasible, man. It's useful? Is that what you said? No, I don't think it's feasible. Feasible. It's not feasible. I don't know. I just, I, I guess I believe in America more than you do, brother. Hey. You got Blizzard in your chat? <laughs> yes. And he's, he irritated the fuck out of me just now. I, I, I was appealing to emotion by saying humans maybe shouldn't die. That's funny as fuck. <sighs> anyway. No, I'm, like I said, you're you're making a lot of points. That Nobody are, stars like, in America. Get fucked, dude. You're such an idiot. It's like this, right? I feel like we're both sitting there saying that these problems exist and we're just thinking about them and, and trying to come up with a solution in a different way at the end of the day. Uh, well, what I'm saying I don't is... Think, the, I don't think what you're saying and what I'm saying is too far off. Well, the difference is the way that you want to go about accomplishing it and the way that you frame it because you're framing this as some kind of competition, uh, well, in part, between illegal immigrants and black people in America. And that's just not the case. Like, that doesn't have to be a competition. It's not a zero-sum game. The more people that you have in a community, the more human power that you have, the more labor power you have. It literally that's a good is a competition when it comes to the job market. Job market in our current, equals competition. In our current structure of the economy, you're correct. And I'm telling yes. you that, that, that the, the our betters like it that way. The billionaire class, the rich people like it that way. They want us at each other's throats. They want us saying, don't let the illegal immigrants in because they're going to turk my gerb. Okay? What I'm telling you is that that's everybody... That's the truth! That's so... It doesn't have to be, though. There is a better future out there. There is a future... Instead of, instead of illegal immigration, right, if these people want to come in, they sh we should make it so it's legal and they're not being uh, fucked over. Personally. I agree. No, I, I agree a thousand percent. You will not right have now, any disagreements from me there. Right, 
because right now what's happening is is they're 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 being tossed around like a hacky sack, right? Yes. And then they're eventually what happens is is that these people the people who are for immig- who are sitting there saying it's a humanitarian issue, they they end up pulling a NIMBY and then putting it on to black people like they do everything else. You're right. So then it, for- it forces it to be a competition. Yes. So instead of saying so, it's, so, 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 so you're playing the game. So you're, you're, you understand then you're playing their game. You're saying, yes, sir, we will fight internally and make this a big issue and ignore all the ways that you're fucking us. That's what you're doing. So stop that no. and say, let's all work together and say that we need better conditions for all of us because this is a group project. We've done that before and we got fucked every time. We, the Civil Rights Act was not getting fucked, I promise. Not the Civil Rights Act, the 14th Amendment. The 14th, hold on, I forget which one that is. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to the amendments. Hilarious. Uh, why is Google white? It's the worst color. I uh, hate that. Oh, well, well, not to say it like that, but yeah, like, hey, that shit is too bright. It's too bright. It's like my skin in the winter. Oh, uh, let's see. Wait. Like, look at that amendment and what it was meant for and how much it's been abused since. Defined citizenship contains the privileges of immunities clause, the due process clause, and the equal protection clause and deals with post civil war issues. So. Was this for they where they freed the slaves? No, no, no. Yeah, that's the thirteenth. That's the thirteenth. Thirteenth amendment. Is that the one you meant? No, the fourteenth amendment is okay. basically they're supposed. To, all of those things that were supposed to be for the uh, people who were freed as slaves because they still weren't considered uh, uh, citizens, right? So what they were forcing them to do is walk around with like ID badges and telling them they could only work certain jobs and live in only certain places. And if they were caught somewhere else or, you know, soliciting or loitering, they would be put in prison and then be treated as a slave again, right? So it was the prison pipeline started way back then. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Prison yeah. is just modern-day slavery, yeah. Yeah, so what happens is is that eventually other groups uh, come in, and, like, if you're a first-generation person, right, and you come here illegally, right, then if you're, if you're kids are born here, then they are American citizens due to this amendment, right? Even okay. if you came over here illegally or through other means, right? Okay. So then what happens is is those people have this amendment and they're uh it, which is fine. I get it. If, as American citizens, it's fine. But then you get <laughs> businesses and uh people who you get businesses trying to use this amendment. And then you have people using this amendment uh, in the reverse way, sitting there telling you that, like, hey, uh, you can't have, like, quote, I guess right now, like, that's why affirmative action was shot down is because the 14th Amendment, even though they say it's reverse discrimination, even though most of the people who were uh, who were using it and benefiting from it were essentially just white women. So... It's, it's kind of weird how you get uh, different laws and different uh, things passed, right? You work together with people on uh, different things like the 19, I think the 1952 uh, immigration law, right? That happened so like more than 2,000 or 3,000 Asian people can come in. And that's also made it so it's easier for uh, Blacks from other countries to come in and everything else, other people to come in. Uh, because before that, you know, it was only like it was very difficult to get in if you weren't white. So then you have that happen. And then the people who were allowed to take advantage of that, you look at them and most of them are saying nothing but disparaging things about black people using white supremacy as talking points. So it's like you do a kumbaya with people and then eventually in the long run, you get fucked. So. You can't really legislate on the. You can't really legislate people of a specific ideology aren't allowed in the country unless they're like proclaimed Nazis or like proclaimed white supremacists, like uh, 
who's uh, Nick Nick Fuentes. But like, if somebody's just like, "Oh, I'm not racist. I, I have black friends. It's just I don't want them in my neighborhood." Like, there's really no way to legislate keeping them out of the country. You know, I like I just don't know how you would prevent that. Well, that they did it before while, with gentlemen agreements and other things like that. Yeah, but legally, I feel like we should just let people in, and then if there are con- like if there are people being racist, we deal with that as it comes. Because frankly, people come here from conservative countries, like uh, you know, is like conservative Islamic countries is a big one, and they end like generations down the line, they end up being less conservative and less. Uh, you know, less prejudice. So like the Muslim population in America is more accepting of gay and trans people than the average American, uh, because they're, you know, they're a minority population. So they're kind of pushed into the same categories as a lot of people who are disenfranchised. So that kind of happened naturally. So like, that's, that might be, I can see how that might be a problem in certain areas, but that's something that you can't really legislate that well. Well, you can legislate it pretty well. You just need to uh, make all these uh, rich white people move in these poor neighborhoods and then ask their property. And then you can get the poor people to move in these rich neighborhoods and you have mixed neighborhoods and that probably solved the issue. No, you you just incentivize. Listen, if I could buy a house in a black neighborhood for for a reasonable price, I would do that. Like if it's a if it's a decent house. But as it stands, I can't afford one right now. Like, it, like just solving the housing crisis, period, would help, first of all. Second of all, it's not a matter of, like, initially, the reason that suburbs were built is because of racism. Like, suburban neighborhoods are largely white. And yes. and they did that on purpose, to keep black people out. Because, you know, it's, it still happens very commonly where a black person is just walking down the street of a suburban neighborhood and gets the cops called on him, right? So, yeah. um, breaking down these suburbs... And, you know, making prices more reasonable all around and also uplifting black people economically is just going to naturally result in a, so in a mixture. You put, the, you put the illegal immigrants in those suburbs. Put all of them there. Well, I don't care. A lot, a lot of the immigrants look like the white people there in the first place. So why not? Put, uh, put 12 immigrants in the, in the basement of each white person's house. Let's do it. <laughs> I, I think some of those white people would like that. That's how we yeah. achieve integration. No, but but seriously, no, like, that's what they said that they're going to do in uh, New York, right? They yeah, like, yeah. have to house some immigrants or some shit like that. No, I don't think anybody should be forced to house people that they don't want to house. That's not what I'm saying. I, I was just joking. What I'm saying is, if you were to break down some of that, that's just what I said. If you break down the, like the financial barriers largely, then this will naturally just kind of happen. You know, people have a tendency toward accepting one another. It's only through all pre-existing prejudices that they learn from their surroundings that they themselves become prejudiced, you know? So they'll tend toward that natural mixture. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess in my, I guess my worldview is if you just give people the basics, things will improve. It's it's really Mm -hmm. that simple. And I will tell you that you need to make sure that uh, when you're giving people things, you can't give them a blank check. Why not? Blank checks never work out. Well, it's it's not a blank check, I'm saying. I'm saying give them the basics. It's not a blank check. That's the basics. That's, that's a check that says the basics on it. What people consider the basics depends on the person, though, right? Well, let's Who's start with three square meals a day, running water, and a house. Three square meals a day, running water now. So, okay. Yeah, that's a good start. So, so how do you quantify? How do you quantify the money for uh, each area, right? Because each city and state, the standard of living or the cost of living is different. That's all arbitrary. That's made up. We can get rid of that. We can just say this is the cost of the housing everywhere. Like they, they can just make it a flat rate, and also that will help integration as well. The you fact that there are, are think about that for a second. Happen. Think about the fact that we live in one United Nation, right? One United States, and there are so vastly different areas that there are literally different costs of living. Like the amount of money that I make now would never get me anywhere in New York. But in Ohio, I'm living large. You know, I got a nice apartment. It's 40 bucks an hour. It's good. So why is that? 
It's to keep us separated. That's by design. Like, the, I hate that. Okay. Well, I see your point, and mm-hmm. uh, you made a lot of, uh, I would say, interesting and... Uh, I thought you'd use that word. <laughs> interesting arguments, right? I wouldn't say you're not... I wouldn't say you're uh, too far off base, right? Like, mm-hmm. some some people who call themselves liberal, they, they start t- telling me their ideas, and I'm like, what? Like, no, that's not going to happen. Okay. And it reeks of, like, a lot of times, it reeks of, uh, like, uh, trying to use uh, some kind of uh, nefarious uh, savior complex bullshit or, like, trying to get me to believe in something that I, I, I will never believe in. But you, on the other hand, for the most part, have just come out and said, all right, let's talk about, let's talk about money and shit, which I understand, which, you know, everyone understands money, food on the table. And stuff like that, which is, I feel like, a lot more reasonable. And if a lot more people who consider themselves liberals move that way instead of th- th- whatever they're doing nowadays, for the most part, there probably be be more people who would be voting for it and like you know actually getting shit done. Because it's 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 the problem is you're, you're being forced to choose between uh, a lot of these whack whack jobs on the left and then these. Uh, uh, races don't want to do anything for for anybody except themselves, you know, people on the right, which is wild to me. Mm-hmm. That's not the no. country I grew up in. No, I agree. And and I think that um I I I, I don't let me just let me not make any assumptions. Like I, I think do you agree with me that like, you know, if we give people those basic necessities that things will probably improve? Like, I feel like, like if you if you make it available to them, sure. Okay, sure. So the cool. availability at least, like make it more available, right? Yeah. Yeah, we can agree on that. Middle ground. So um, I think we agree on that. I think we disagree on how that is attained. Because like I said, my big thing is people look at people all wrong. We see people as naturally inclined toward laziness, naturally inclined towards sloth. Right. And that's just not the way that people are. People are inclined toward convenience. That is true. So if it's more convenient for me, if I like both drawing and singing, but it is more convenient for me to become a singer, then I am more likely to do that. But that does not make me a lazy singer. That makes me that just was my choice due to convenience. In another world, I might have been an artist. So people tend toward convenience, but I feel like we're getting into this idea that people are just naturally lazy. They would just lay down all day and smoke weed and do, and jerk off and play video games and dust Cheeto dust crust off their neck no, beards. No, no. And I just but don't I'm think that saying. most humans... Well, I'm not saying you are yeah. specifically, but I just don't think most humans are like that. And I think that if you do invest in humanity as a whole and make sure that everybody has the basics that they need just to get by you would be amazed at what we as a species could accomplish. Really true. I would say it, I would say it like this instead of uh, laziness or whatever else. I would say that there will always be a contingent of people who are willing to help, right? But they are always uh, they always think that some decisions by the higher by the government or other people is dubious, right? So instead of giving those people the opportunity to find fault, right? You should write the laws or give the help to the people in a way that it's harder for them to blame the people getting help, right? So if you are sitting there and you make it available and you make these things available and the person has to actually like go get it, right? And actually has to like go take the classes and, uh, you know, read the books and shit like that and, you put the you make it so they don't have to think about just pure survival. They can focus on, you know, uh, learning and shit, right? Because I think that's the main difference. If you gave me the same kind of uh, opportunities as like some rich kid, right? I'm pretty sure, like, yeah, my scores, my ACT scores, and other scores would be higher. I'm pretty sure that I would be a little bit more. Uh, 
book smart, right? But I was so far behind the curve of where I, because of where I grew up and everything that I had to struggle and claw and basically had to like teach myself how to read and other things that I really wasn't learning it at school. I had yep. to teach myself how to read books, how to, how to uh, try to think about the world, right? And the mm -hmm. problem is, is that, well, and I don't know if it's a problem, but what in, it happened is, is that I came up with like a different wor worldview and a different way of thinking about things and phrasing things that some people might go like, man, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I know exactly what I'm saying. And I don't think what I'm saying is ridiculous or retarded or anything like that. I just think you're not understanding me because you maybe are used to hearing things in a certain way. And I'm saying something that's completely correct, but it's just not in the way that you're used to hearing it. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like overall that has shaped me in the way where I'm thinking, okay, yeah, just give me the opportunity. And I feel like, like you said, if people aren't lazy, then if you give them the opportunity, you don't have to like put it in their hand. You can just say like, you can put it, I don't know, you can put it on their doorstep where they actually have to open the, di the door and touch grass or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I think you and I both do agree that uh, there needs to be an equalization of opportunity in this country. Uh, I think it's grossly uneven. And frankly, I think that's the basis, one of the bases of my worldview. So we do agree on that, at least. Um, I am going to go ahead and call it here. Um, all right. Goon, if you're still there, I finally remembered your name, first of all. Uh, second yeah, of all, I want to thank both of you so much for coming tonight and for talking to me. I feel like we uh, talked about we talked about some pretty productive things, and I got an idea of like the things that. First of all, I need to study the amendment so I don't look like an idiot with a political Twitch broadcast that doesn't know the freaking constitutional amendments. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll study that, uh, and beyond that, I'll just do a little more research and hopefully come prepared for uh, yeah, my grand appearance. And, yeah, Why are you? Uh... Constitutional Rights and the Different Civil Rights Act, I think, what, 52, 54, 5, and then, like, 64, and then there was another one, what, 60, I forget what the last one was. But, yeah, you got to really read those. Because also, the Voting Rights Act, right, that outlaw poll taxes and shit. Very important. You Where are you supposed to be uh, on the show? What's that? Where are you supposed to be on the show? Oh, uh, we're recording August 19th. I don't know when they release. It might be a few months or so. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. It's exciting. Uh, That's cool. All right. Thanks all again, right, guys. Thanks. I really appreciate it. No problem. All right, bro. I hope you have a wonderful night. I will night. catch you later. All right, Alex. All right, good night, y'all. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to see more. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload. You can join my channel membership at youtube.com slash TTV slash join for only 99 cents a month. That's less than the price of a blowjob from your mom. You can be part of the channel membership program and you will get early access content as well as a sweet badge next to your name and exclusive emojis in the comments that nobody else gets. Thank you again and I will see you all in the next video.